Just as some cities were beginning to reopen for business after months of restrictions slowing the spread of the virus, the video of George Floyd's death has reignited the anguish over inequality and mistreatment by police. What started as protests in more than 75 cities over the weekend turned into a wave of disturbing images and videos of riots and looting. The economy was already on edge from the pandemic, which so far has put over 40 million people out of work. Will fear of violence and aggressive police tactics and general unrest in the streets further change consumers' behavior? Today on Dumb Money Live, how protests and riots are impacting our investing strategy. This is Dumb Money Live with Chris Camillo, Dave Hansen, and Jordan McLean. Streaming live on YouTube, we are Dumb Money. Hey there, Dave here along with Chris and Jordan. Welcome to Dumb Money Live. I, for one, can tell you that I am glad that we're still under this self-quarantine this weekend. Sheltering in place never seemed like a better idea, Chris, as our neighborhood was repeatedly mentioned on Twitter this weekend as a target for looting. Our local shopping center was closed. They shut down midday Saturday. Police barricaded off all the entrances. Two other local malls shut down completely Saturday afternoon with police closing down all of those entrances. At least one of those stayed closed and is gonna be closed again today. That could not be good for business. Retailers already suffering from a lack of customers after the COVID shutdown. Even worse, the small local businesses we saw all over social media, windows smashed, inventory ransacked, big companies too, like Apple stores and Target stores. So what does it mean for the brick and mortar stocks that just Thursday we were considering going all in on? And what are the new safety stocks that we should be looking at in this environment? Chris, I, your, your play on Thursday, when we were talking about uh, outdoor stocks, the great outdoors, Vista was one of yours, Vista Outdoors, not really because of their ammo division, but they were up big this morning, like over 10%, and they still are. So good good, good job on that play. Yeah, so, you know, that, that play really didn't take into account, you know, any of this, Dave, obviously. Um, but, you know, the ammo sales, Vista Outdoors, uh, used to be uh, Smith and Wesson sold that division. They are, uh, they are, you know, one of the world's largest producers and manufacturers of ammunition, selling to governments and police, uh, and obviously to recreational uh, uh, as well. Uh, they've already, they're already sold out. They, they, they can't keep up with demand. They basically said they're going to be pumping out as much as they can make all summer long. Um, this is just really increasing my confidence that they are likely to have a robust, uh, you know, uh, d demand for their ammo. I think it's fe federal ammunition is one of their big ammo brands, probably for the remainder of the year going into the election cycle. Can I just say, guys, I don't know about you. I know we've been talking a lot over text all weekend long. I, you know, I needed a break from investing and investing research this weekend. I'm just gonna be totally transparent yep. with you. I have not been, I, I was gonna hop on the Discord, our Discord, Dumb Money Discord channel on Friday. I, I actually did that Benzinga conference on Friday. It was an options boot camp. It was a lot of fun. Uh, I don't know if any of our members, you know, watched me doing that. It was a ton of fun on Friday. Uh, if we have anyone from that Benzinga world that's joining us today, welcome to the Dumb Money Live channel. Um, I just had, I needed a break. I got done with that. I didn't log on to Discord. I logged on to Discord for the first time about an hour and a half ago. Uh, I'll probably spend a lot of time on Discord this week, but I spent the entire weekend uh, cleaning my garage, which was super therapeutic for me. I just needed to like forget about the, tr Dave, uh, Jordan, I have been, you know, I have been on this 15 hours a day for four months straight since mid-February. I have not stopped. This is the yeah. first time this weekend with all the anxiety from now, the looting and our neighborhood being a target, my restaurant being a target. Uh, we had security working there, you know, through the night on Saturday night. We were very concerned uh, initially for our employees, our customers, but then afterwards, just the place getting looted. Um, it's been, you get, Dave, your bar, there was a, your bar was right next to what was, appeared to be one of these brick drops, right, uh, yesterday. And yeah. it's just been, I needed to take the weekend off. So I, I want to apologize for anyone that has questions for us in the Discord. I'm new, no, normally active on that, but I've been very inactive this weekend. I want to talk about these trades. I want to talk about strategy. I do want to spend some quality time 
maybe responding to some of the comments just in, in the in the Dumb Money Live feed today. Yeah, I think that we will. Episode, so we don't have a ton to talk about in terms of trades. But Jordan, what have you been doing this weekend? What what what, have you, what are your thoughts? You're in the suburbia. You've been safe, right? Like you're you're not like stress do you realize guys our house like we we had to pull down the curtains and we've been in we were quarantined yesterday at 7 p.m there were hundreds of threats against our neighborhood saying burn our neighborhood down it is a wealthier neighborhood um you know i get the anger but it was for those of us that live here that feel like we are super aware and super tolerant and we're just trying to listen and and we're for change and like doing everything we can to, 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 you know, help what, what is a very concerning situation for, you know, for a big part of America, like, you know, just getting blanket targeted like that is scary. Uh, and, and there's not enough police to go around. Uh, there's, there's so it was not. a stressful and, weekend, but Jordan, you were your neighborhood's pretty calm, right? Yeah. But we're, we're further away from, you know, um, kind of the, um, downtown areas. So, we didn't really have that imminent threat of uh, any of the protests or any of the violence coming our way. Um, but I'm still concerned about all of it, right? I'm still concerned about, you know, I was worried about you guys. I'm worried about all my friends that live in and around um, Dallas proper. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's probably, it's been on my mind the whole, the whole weekend. It's a, it's a scary bit. Yeah, I, sure. I don't really think that a lot of people that are outside of Dallas, we haven't been on the news as much as like L.A. And, and New York. But guys, Dallas is probably one of the most hit areas of the country. There are restaurants and bars that have been trashed and looted, buildings with millions of dollars of damage broken into. I mean, what, there have been a handful of, I know, black-owned businesses that were completely looted Um that 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 are in our primary kind of districts, entertainment districts, like just, Deep just Ellum outside, was destroyed. Yeah, just, Uptown, just outside of our central destroyed. business district, right uh, on the other side so of many, the. Uh, you you can't hear me, but it's it's sorry, basically right bad. on the other side of the uh, the highway. There's a entertainment and kind of a, a revitalized uh, neighborhood that um, has a lot of restaurants and bars, and and that area was absolutely destroyed on Friday, and then. Again, on Saturday, it started going to different areas, and uh, Sunday night, the, the city of Dallas had their curfew orders in effect that w were for that neighborhood, the uptown neighborhood near it, the entire central business district, and because and, and several other areas, and because of that, our town, uh, both where Chris and I live, and where Jordan lived until he moved to suburbia, um, we had a curfew in effect. For the first time that I can ever think of. We had a, at 7 p.m. Sunday night until 6 a.m. this morning, it was a curfew in effect. Now I, you know, you still saw a couple people walking their dogs and there was not, there was not a uh, imminent threat, but it was, it was scary. And even our local uh, police departments have like bolstered up. You sent me a, an image, Chris, that was, that was. Yeah, they, they had support from other state departments that knew our neighborhood was a threat. So there were a lot of other uh, police forces that came into our neighborhood to try to help because they saw how big of a threat it was. This, this um, is yeah, our, they, normally this is where they park the local day, right? uh, fire trucks. <laughs> this is, this is where they normally park our fire trucks, but um, I don't know where exactly these vehicles are from, but that's, that was the scene here in our neighborhood. Yeah. And I think if people want to see what's going on in our neighborhood, it's, it's, you know, we live in university park, but it's actually Highland park is how most of the world refers to it. It's like two sister neighborhoods and, you know, if you tw if you look on Twitter for Highland Park, you'll see Highland Park in Texas. Uh, you'll see just the, the online debate on Twitter over whether or not people should burn down this neighborhood. And, and there are other crazy. neighborhoods named Highland Park. There's one in Chicago. There's one in uh, Michigan. There's there's several Highland Parks. And so I saw a bunch of people on Twitter saying, "Are you? Are, th th there's nothing going on here." But they were they were in a different state. <laughs> so crazy listen, times. On one hand, you know. Listen, we're 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 a investing channel, right? So like, we don't often really have that much commentary on geopolitical events other than their impact on investments. But this is so big that I just want to say to anyone out there um, that you know, do what do whatever you can, but try to be peaceful. Try to be on, you know, try to be on, uh, you know, the side that's not violent. You know, for anyone out there that's following our channel, that's a protester. Do your thing. Protests. There's so many amazing pro. I mean, what's amazing is there's like 99.9% .9 of the protesters out there are so peaceful. Yeah. And they're actually last night was so cool because they started yesterday 
putting their lives at stake to defend stores. And that I thought was to defend police. Like, like that I thought was, could that have been like, like an apex, like, like a mark that's going to like, we're going to cross over to like trying to make this into something that is going to cause change. And like, that's going to open up a lot of eyes on both sides because everyone's so defensive at first trying to take sides. I think that was a big move by a lot of these protesters to put their lives at stake and getting into fights with other protesters to protect business and to protect other people that were innocent. And, and you know, like, I thought that was super cool. And hopefully that's that's a yeah. spark to, to, to send us in a positive direction this week. Now, that yeah, was, I hope so. Naive and optimistic, yeah. but. <laughs> right. Yeah, I mean, I hope so. Right. I mean, you know, they're trying to get something done. Um, and. You know, what really needs to happen is we need to, you know, get people to be peaceful, get their get their opinions out there and uh, try to figure out how to make change happen, whether that's through elections or um, you know public awareness. But, you know, those are the beneficial things that can come out of this. But the riots and the vandalism and the, you know, all the pain, that stuff you know, just it really detracts from uh, what's going on. Yeah. And, and there's multiple yeah. groups at play and and. Kind of the the gist of this episode is what does that do to consumer behavior beyond beyond everything that's going on? We need to kind of watch out for our portfolios too. So, are there things that we should be doing? I'm you know I don't think that I saw multiple Apple stores uh, which apparently have very strong glass because I saw what looked like a baseball bat uh, at on an Apple store. Uh, for 10 minutes until they could get in. So apparently people got in from some other entrance and you saw people running around inside. But are we concerned about big companies and just as they're reopening some of their stores having that kind of damage? Are we uh, looking at Home Depot as, you know, people are now buying lumber to board up stores that were just reopening? Do we look at what what do we do here? I, I'm, I'm at a loss. I, I'm hoping that we can have a conversation here among you guys and our viewers to um, figure out where where we should go from here. Yeah, so let's talk about the uh, let's talk about the obvious plays. Um, and by the way, I think it's important, uh, like we do with everything. Anytime there's change, uh, we're social arb investors. We invest in change. Okay, that's that's essentially what we do. We identify change early, or we attempt to identify change early. We then attempt to connect that change to investable assets that that change would impact positively or negatively. And that's, that's what we're going to do on today's show. So, so I think it's important to understand what stocks will be impacted positively or negatively, maybe not for today, but if this gets worse, right? So if this gets worse over the next few days, next week, let's just say it, it's what we call that tail risk. We don't think it's going to get significantly worse, but there's always a chance that it does. And if it does, we have to understand what are the trades. I mean, the obvious ones, guys, um, by the way, I think the one that a lot of consumers think of, and we saw a lot of memes uh, this weekend about this, is glass, glass companies. Uh, Owen Corning, right? Like, what, what's this? I I am so embarrassed. Uh, I was so off my game this morning that I actually, and by the way, I'm also embarrassed to tell you how well my account did. I know, I know our followers. I know you guys want to know. I'm just going to tell you because I know you're probably, you know, you're, some of you guys are talking about it. Um, uh, my account is embarrassingly up. Another six hundred thousand this morning, uh, and that's like three and a half, four percent. I mean, it's it, it it's it's three and a half percent. It's so ridiculous. I could not even believe it. You, if you watch our episode last week about Gan, God, another monumental trade. It's insane. I also bought um, I bought Ruger on Friday. I, right before the market closed, I bought Ruger on Friday because I thought, you know what? I kind of felt I felt the escalation, and I was like, you know what? I think the odds are this weekend more towards escalation than less. And I think even though Ruger was trading really high, I liked it as a weekend trade. I haven't sold it yet, but I do not want to be in like Ruger long-term. So that's a trade I'm likely to exit soon, relatively soon. Um, the Corning's Glass, Owen Corning, that's what it's called, right? This is my, I'm so embarrassed. I bought the wrong stock this morning. <laughs> I, I had this idea that I, I do not think that the broken glass is going to contribute meaningfully to this company. They're such a huge company. But what I did think was that retail investors would trade this company up. So my concept was to buy it in the pre-market and sell it like midday today, right? So 
What I did, though, is I bought the wrong company. I bought this co- I was so busy. I had contractors at my house this morning doing stuff. I'm like, I, I was up so late last. I'm on this terrible sleep schedule. I'm up to like four in the morning. I, I got a few hours of sleep. This contractor woke me up at 7 a.m. I was like in a, in, a, in a haze. I bought the wrong stock. And I didn't realize that until right before we started this episode. We were talking about it. What did you, what so did you end up buying? I out of that stock. It was like another corning. <laughs> uh, but 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 that's tra- that trade isn't like that trade's not like one that I really love honestly. I but there is one that I love, and I I'm gonna sound like a broken record, guys, because you know I just keep talking and talking and talking about this trade. Um, it's my trade of the summer. It worked. This tra- guys, this trade has worked its way into every episode. This trade. It was like uh, the the um, I think we started talking about it during the uh, uh, recreational uh, uh, power sports trade. Although I don't think they really have many, but they have things that are related to recreational power sports. The outdoor trade, the great outdoors, definitely fits in there, right? And now this whole rioter unrest, civil unrest trade, it fits in there. Vista Outdoors, VSTO, that's my trade. So I bought more Vista this morning. I already had a ton of it, and I bought even more this morning. And like, I feel like for me, half their mark, half the half the company is ammunition, the other half is outdoors. I just, I love it, man. I love it for this summer. That's my that's my trade. That's like my thing again. This episode. That's what do you think? That's uh, impressive that you. Um... You basically picked a stock that works for all of our topics all all summer long, and uh, you're sticking with it, and it seems to be doing well ever <laughs> since their earnings. They've been just on the upswing, so uh, congrats on that. Your, your other trade that was doing well that, that you told me this morning was... Yeah, I'll be out in... Are, are you talking to me? No, I, was, I have an emergency. I'll, I'll be back in just a few minutes. Sorry. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Something to do with uh, the contractors at his house. Let's uh, let's pop him out of there. But I, I was going to say the other trade that he was talking about this morning that has um, done surprisingly well for him, and I was giving him such a hard time on Thursday or last Tuesday when we were talking about the uh, you know Hertz bankruptcy, and he went with Avis, which is Car. Um, he's he's done remarkably well in Avis Rent a Car because. Uh, I, I, because I don't know why, and I was giving him such a hard time. But I love it when someone makes money on this channel, and uh, he's he's not here to hear me singing his yeah, praises thing, for being yeah, a great stock with, picker. The thing with Avis is I just don't – I really don't understand what's catapulting it up this morning too. Um, right, I don't see a lot of – I don't see a lot of travel um, happening um, as a result of anything that happened over the weekend. So an yeah. 8% move on it. Um, I get that it popped a little bit with the loss of a competitor, uh, but um, – I would just think that the rental car market is going to be down with the uh, with the airline travel market for the next, you know, what six to twelve months. Would, so that's why I'm, that's why I did, didn't jump into that one. Yeah, I know. I absolutely agree, and I, I think should that have. the uh, well, we both should have. I was giving him such a hard time, but the reality is, it there are going to be travelers this summer. There are going to be people who move their summer vacation from airplane to vehicle, and if you don't want to put miles yeah. in your car or you want to, you know drive something bigger you want to rent you know if, if, if you drive a an economy small vehicle in the city and you want to drive to the country i i can see people renting cars so i was i was wrong on that one but we'll see how we'll see how it plays out they were so yeah. beaten down that that's that was a good a good um time to buy it um i'm just looking at the uh the, the comments here the high conviction trades that we, that he has had are few and far between, but uh, what was what was his most recent high conviction trade? I think we were all in it. Was, was it Gan? Yeah, and I'm not in Gan. You're not in Gan. Oh, that's I, I never bought it. That's I painful. It. I should. I mean, I should have right, obviously. And then uh, the, they announced the deal on what Thursday between Thursday and Friday, and then the stock just took off. Uh, well, he was ever telling since me then. that uh, he since since buying. Yeah, he he bought like six times. I thought I was going crazy buying 10,000 shares of a stock that I really didn't know anything about. And it was kind of, you know, this like foreign thing that just went public. And I mean, I've, I've made $75,000 and he has made six times as much. That's, that's a move. But what, yeah. what, what, what else are you invested in right now? 
Have you have you bought anything recently that that we haven't covered much? No, I mean the last couple things that I bought were um, Polaris and in the and BRP, which is the Ski Do D D Triple O, and you know those things are doing great. I bought um, I bought um, Love, which is uh, Southwest Airlines, and that thing's taken off, um, so that one's doing really well too. Um, yeah. Still in Peloton, and it's yes. looking like it's working its way back up. That thing dropped a little bit with the with people cycling out of the stay at home trade, but it's um, it did. it's up it's up today though. So I think we're yeah we're looking better on that one. I you know I bought several of these uh, ones that we talked about last week in the uh, great outdoor trades, and they're at, they're all doing pretty well. I think uh, if I can pull up yeah, my people, account. So here. somebody just asked, is it too late to buy Gan? And that's, that's a great question. I mean, who knows, right? And yeah. so um, I remember seeing some research um, and a few people gave um, GAN a price target of like $24. Um, so there's that kind of guide to go off of. So it's probably sitting, you know, about priced in from what um, like an analyst would think about it, but it's got a lot of momentum. Um, the thing that worries me about it um, is that they're like a 200 and something PE they, um, but you get it. They're a, if they're a huge, if they've got huge growth poten- potential, you know, maybe that doesn't really uh, matter as much. But. And that was, when when do we get out? It, I mean, it's up another fifteen percent today. At some point, it might make yeah. sense to just take the profit on that one. But for me, it's kind of one of those longer term. This this is a platform play that powers an industry that is growing that I that I like that I want want to be in. They they do both the sports betting and also the um, online like casino style games that you can play online. And as states are opening, more and more states are doing that. And we see when a state does it, the stock moves. Um, and other than developing their own platform from scratch, what, what are these casinos going to do when they, when they need to do it? Are, th- there's not that many competitors in the space. So I, I like GAN as kind of a medium to longer term hold, even though when, when I first got in it, I was like, yeah, this, this, I want to be in for the pop, but I'm, I'm liking it. And it's, yeah, I like, I mean, I like them too. Um, right. It's, it's a pretty small market cap. So I think the people that are in it right now want to be in it. And so, you know, if you're not really having anybody that's wanting to get out, then, um, you know, the, the stock could move higher. I, I just don't know. Right. Um, just recapping it is concerning our- to see, it, you know, it would be concerning to see, to, to jump in at $25 when it's, you know, just made I know three huge jumps like day after day. Well, and this, um, this is the, you know, if you're not getting in right now, you're basically saying it's, it's past its prime, right? Me yeah, staying in is be me betting that it's going to keep going up. Right. We'll, we'll have to keep an eye on that one. Uh, I do want to mention though, uh, of the stocks that are up, that GAN is up 15%, nearly 15% today. Our Royal Caribbean options, the ones that we keep talking about, the cruiser's going to cruise stock, that's up 15% today too. So, <laughs> <laughs> and those are what the, uh, the January, 2021 options, uh, Peloton is up. Tesla is up today. There's, there's all kinds of, uh, interesting things going on and, you know, as yeah, we saw so that's the probably just out. like a sympathy thing with, uh, with SpaceX, with their successful launch over the weekend. Which um, did you watch that? That was incredible. No, I watched, I watched the false, the, the, uh, the false start, the, uh, the false start launch, uh, the day before. And so I didn't want to invest any more time into it. Uh, but it was super interesting to watch, um, just all the stuff that was going on in and around. It seemed like a huge marketing, uh, bit for NASA too. <laughs> it was, and their, their telecast of it was, you know, well-produced as, as you would expect it to be, but it was, um, good. It was mild cheesy, but I thought, I thought it was really <laughs> interesting. I would love to, uh, to take a flight. So I'm I'm signing up for the uh, for the next one as soon as as soon as the price comes down a little bit I would, I want to go into uh, low orbit, it just seems too cool. Um, but as the as the roll out of the uh, stocks like the stay at home Amazon Shopify's of the world, Shop- Amazon's up today. Shopify is back down. So, and I'm I'm just kind of surprised that Teladoc was was down earlier. It's it's back to unchanged, but it's weird. And then Zoom took off. Overnight, do you know what happened with Zoom? They're up 15% today. I don't know what happened to Zoom. I'm not in Zoom, yeah. so it's not in my 
immediate oh, watch not, list. Yeah, it's not in your realm. Yeah. But um, that's interesting. It is interesting. Are people uh, less likely to go to the office right now because of uh, unrest? Is that? Uh... I mean, it could be. Or I mean, we, we have so many things going on. So many reasons not to go outside right now. Yeah. I'm I'm completely happy staying indoors. <laughs> for for who knows how long i'm just taking a look here to see if there's any um other comments we do want to get to a lot of comments today and whenever chris comes back i'm sure he wants to chime in on these as well so i don't want to answer any that i know he'll have a good answer for but um do you think golf courses could be targeted by riots and if so would that affect our outdoor golf trades that that's one i hadn't really thought of um, the weird thing about that, though, is that, you know, most golf courses are outside of some of these city centers. And with most of the demonstrations happening in major city centers, then I would think that uh, it, uh, I would I wouldn't see people driving to go do a protest on a golf course because yeah. well, you're going to interrupt like maybe 75 people's day. Right. But you're not going to get and um, there's not that much that, to break or steal. It's a big open field. Yeah. Um, right. Callaway is up one and a half percent today. Yeah, but that's that's an interesting thought. I I do like the way that uh, that people think trying to find the uh, trying trying to find these stock plays in a very kind of um, unsettling time. Do current events make yeah. you guys want to move out of Dallas, Jordan? Are you happy that you're in the suburbs right now? Yeah, I mean, I look, I miss living in the neighborhood next to you guys because when you're talking about uh, you know getting together and having a beer. Uh, you know, with your social distancing parties, you know, it makes me sad. But uh, but at the same time, I don't really miss um, how crowded those uh, streets are with parked cars and then people like Chris driving 40 miles an hour um, through these really crowded streets. Like, I don't miss that at all. Yeah, yeah. Um, now, the traffic, that you know, ever since social distancing and stay at home went into effect, the traffic was amazing for about three weeks, maybe two weeks. But now everyone's out. I I, right. I really enjoyed it, it. I felt like that our community turned into like a uh, Pleasantville 1950s, uh, you know, no no traffic out, <laughs> a lot of people out walking their dogs, that sort of right. thing. Um, but it's it, it seems like it's just back to normal. And I'm actually shocked at how many people were out driving around this weekend. I had to... Uh, I, I had to get out to pick someone up who was uh, who rented an RV and needed to get home. So I, I took some highways for the first time in a long time, and it seemed like just normal everyday weekend traffic. It was it was way more than I expected. Uh, JJ wants to know if I bought any uh, Vista Outdoor shares. I did not, um, not for any reason other than I was uh, just slower to react than Chris was. Um, yeah, I think, I mean, so Vista Outdoor, I didn't buy it either. I should have. Um, obviously, hindsight's pretty easy. Um, but, you know, it's just, I, I was waiting for a better price, which is obviously never a good idea. <laughs> right? <laughs> You've so been I caught get, several get, times out of caught, trades that you wanted to be in. I get caught, I get caught waiting for a better price um, more often than I'd care to admit. I'm going to check to make sure Chris has uh, not rejoined us. Nope, his chair is still empty. Um, they, they are saying that his feed looks way better today, though. So I'm very happy that this uh, new setup, uh, his, they can see in each individual gray beard hair. So, oh, man, does he have gray beard hair now? Uh, apparently he's getting old. I don't know. I'm, I'm staying young. Um, we also want to remind you to press the like button, because if you haven't done that, we need to wake up YouTube, let them know that, that we're on the air. We uh we do have we have a good size audience following us already, four hundred and thirty people it looks like live right now, but only seventy nine people have smashed the button. So, do that. <laughs> we wouldn't be YouTubers if we didn't tell you to do that, and also to uh, subscribe to all of the uh, various channels that we appear on from time to time. How do I get rid of that button? There we go. Uh, let's see what what else do we have here. trying to trying to stay away from the more uh, political protesty kind of things but actually it looks like the comments are fairly everyone everyone wants the thing everyone wants peace and justice for all um, I'm trying to just see here if we have any good questions 
And we also have questions uh, in the uh, Discord group that we might get to a little bit later. So if you if you guys over the weekend noticed that we weren't responding to things in Discord, that's because we were we were heads down. But we will definitely um, be checking checking and maybe answer some of those here on the show today as well. Uh, let's see. Any any thoughts on Home Depot? Um, yeah, I mean, it's just so high right now. Um, I mean, I still own it. Um, and it's a great, I mean, it's a great stock. It's a, um, let's see, where are we at on it? Look, I mean, you're, we're talking, I mean, we're sitting, you know, just off the all time highs for Home Depot. Yeah. Um, and so do you think it's going to move more with people buying, um, you know, some plywood to, cover up windows and stuff like that. I don't think that that's going to be a big enough mover for it. Um, if you're buying, it's, you know, A, for the dividend, B, it's a good quality company. Um, and what well, you're going to see home building coming back pretty soon. Um, and so a lot of home builders use Home Depot, professional, um, you know, contractors use Home Depot. Um, you know, between Home Depot and Lowe's, Lowe's is more the Consumer store, Home Depot is more the professional store. And so, you know, I, you know, if I could predict the future, if, is the stock going to go up and down? I have no idea. Uh, but is it a good company to own? Yeah, sure. It's a great yeah. company to own. Uh, Pedro says Roku is going crazy. Um, let's see what it's doing here just in the, in the last couple of days. Yeah, it is. It's, it's on a tear for the last few days. I'm, I'm in Roku. Are you in Roku still or ever? I was never in Roku. I love Roku. No. no. Oh, look. Thanks, Pedro. He sent us a super chat. That's awesome. He wants to know uh, if you have any price target for GAN or just writing. I, I'm just writing it. Um, I'm, I, I, th this is one that I feel like the information arbitrage, it's still kind of an undiscovered stock. I feel like it's not widely known as the big supplier, the provider that, uh, that, powers these online casinos as they um, as they go online or, or offline casinos as they go online. This this is one that I don't really have a price target for. Um, and it might be one that Chris hates it when I do this, but it's worked out for me well. When you when you put a, a trailing stop limit order in. So as it keeps going up, it resets that limit price up, up, up. But if you stop watching GAN and all of a sudden it it goes down, maybe 10 percent, it it sells it for you. That might be something that I end up doing in this one, just because it's, it may not be one that I continue to watch ongoing. Um, but I, I don't want to sell it before it has a, uh, before it has kind of a downturn. And I may not, I may not still be watching it when that, when that news happens or when, when whatever it is that causes GAN to go down happens. So that might be what I, what I do, but that's, uh, thanks. Thanks for the comment and question there. And everyone's saying smash the like button because it really does help people find us here on YouTube. Just since I uh, asked for the thumbs up button, looks like we now have 166 six thumbs ups. So that's awesome. Thank you, guys. Um, let's see. Chris, be nice to your followers. <laughs> <laughs> what are they saying? Um, please post your buys and the dumb money trades in a timely manner. Yes, we do need to, I I'm doing my best to do that. I did forget to do that on the day that we went on the air, but I went on the air and uh, disclosed everything that I had bought within, within 30 minutes of, of buying it. So uh, we do our best to keep that going. Um, and Chris must have updated his uh, camera with earnings. Yes, he did. <laughs> he upgraded not only his camera, he's now uh, using his real um, his real camera, but he actually bought a Mac Mini because the iPad was not giving him the results that he was hoping for. So he's now plugged in through a Mac Mini watching us on an iPad and apparently dropped off the face of the earth or his feed is frozen. I'm still seeing an empty chair. Maybe he's trying to talk to us and I'm just steamrolling right over it. I don't know. Sure no, he'll he'll he's got he's got some contractors at his house right now, so I'm sure he's solving problems or writing a check or doing something like that. Let's look at Zoom. Uh, Axel wants to know it. He thinks it's too high and wants to know um, if it's a is time it to time short to it? short? Hmm. Yeah. So I mean, 
Look, if you have the only time that you know, I don't want to give advice, but the you know, the only time that I would ever consider sh- shorting a stock is if I thought that I had some information about why that stock price should go lower, right? Um, and so, just because it's gone high doesn't mean it should then go back low. Might it? Maybe. Might it go higher? Maybe. <laughs> and so, yeah, it's one of those. You can, you can get caught, right? If you, if you are asking the question. You know, you you really need to dive into you know what's going on with their business. What is um, you know why did we get this spike today? If you can't answer, you know, really a lot of questions about you know what's happening with the price of the stock and you know what's um, driving some of the price action, then I don't really think that you should be just shorting something because it's gone up. Yeah, no, I I completely agree. And uh, on this chart, if you see that orange dotted line, that's where um, I was. I, I think buying the stock or um, if you try to trade the pattern, yeah, it looks like it goes up and down, up and down, but I would not want to be short in a stock like this. That is again, a platform play that for the future of people working remotely more makes sense. You know, there, I don't, I don't really get involved with multiples or, you know, all of those sort of things. This to me is a momentum stock that is the brand that people are still, um, it's, it's, it's become the verb for teleconference, right? And that's, I'm not currently in zoom. I kind of wish I was, I'm not going to be shorting it at these prices, but if it did go down, I would be buying it. Okay. Somebody just said that earn that earnings is tomorrow. Yeah. Tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. Tomorrow stays safe. So yeah, I mean that that will be very interesting to see what happens there. Um, the thing could go up, up or down at earnings, right? Yeah. Um, and so if you have some information and you think, okay, well this thing's overpriced, um, and you know you've been watching some piece of data that um, leads you to believe that, you know, really test your theory and figure out is that is this something that I'm willing to you know bet money on that it's going to go down because of what I think about what's going to come out at earnings. Um, and if you, you know, if you have a high conviction on that and you're not afraid to, you know, lose money, um, then yeah, I mean, you could play either side of that, uh, of that yeah. earnings call. My, my chart here says that the earnings are on June 4th, but that has been wrong in the past. So if it's tomorrow, it, it's tomorrow. Um, there was a question, uh, a question for Chris. Uh, he used to only make a few high conviction trades a year, but seems to be crazy trading like crazy lately. I think we've talked about this. This is a time where we're seeing an unprecedented, never seen before kind of shift in the way people behave, you know, and, and it's all about detecting these changes. And so I can tell you that I've talked to Chris about this and we're, we're both trading way more than we normally do because we are seeing more opportunities than we normally do. And, and I wouldn't say that most of his trades are high conviction at this point. He's trading on lower conviction trades, lower amounts, but doing well along the way. Like, I, I don't think that, um, some of like, like, I, I don't think that his Ruger or Vista outdoor trades were super high conviction, but he's just playing this kind of momentum move that you know playing playing the news cycle right yeah he just sees something happening um and knows that if that accelerates over the weekend um there's a chance that uh those stocks go higher right and i think that there was really small downside risk like what what are the chances that just ruger is going to drop 15 or 20 percent over the weekend for no reason right um but there's potentially upside in that stock if we do see civil unrest right yeah, absolutely. Um, looking up a uh, a G trends G trends chart on rental cars. It's not one that I've looked at looked at a while. Let's see what we've got. Well, definitely a, an upswing there. This this. Relating to the uh, Hertz and Avis trades that we were talking about, let's look at five years and see where we where we are. Oh yeah, that's that that's is a strong resurgence of rental car demand here just in the past uh, couple of weeks. 
Yeah. No wonder Avis is on fire. And when I say on fire, it's a different time. It's. <laughs> I did see someone comment that as people's cars are on fire, uh, they might need to rent a car. But hopefully that's not affecting that many people in aggregate. Um, <laughs> Jordan, you, you have a, a fan who really wants you to get in GAN and not Tesla. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look, look who's back. Yeah. What I miss. You missed it all. Thank you guys so much for watching. We are dumb money. We will see. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I am glad it's all over. Um, <laughs> now we've been, we've been basically going through, uh, through comments and just a answering questions. We're only, I'm, I'm scrolling through kind of at a delay and I'm only through about uh, a third of the way through the comments, just looking for, uh, for questions that people might be interested in. We've kind of already addressed some of them. Is it, is it now, is it too late to buy GAN? We kind of already talked about that. Um, well, um, we can talked I, about, can I talk about, about when people say yeah. when people say is it too late to buy something? Um, oh, okay, for you, I'm not going to say if it's too late to buy for you because we're not financial advisors and we don't tell you what to do. Don't listen to what we do. Your risk is different than our risk. This is just for education and entertainment. And guys, we don't just say that as a disclaimer. We say it because we actually mean it. Okay, so like, um, is Gan too late for me to buy? Understand something. Every day that I don't sell it. I'm rebuying it. Does that make sense? The fact that I didn't sell it today is exactly the same as me going out and buying it today. Yep. Every day, we always say this, it's like we start off with 100% cash in our account and we consciously make a decision to repurchase everything in our portfolio based on the current price. The only exception to that rule is not wanting to take a tax hit and waiting for long-term capital gains to kick in, right? After 12 months, your tax capital gains rate goes down. But capital gains aside, there's no difference in me buying a stock two weeks ago, having it go up 30%, and me deciding to keep it today. It's essentially saying, I want to own that stock based on what it's trading at right now. It doesn't matter if I owned it three weeks ago, if I have profit or loss in it. That should never impact your investment decision, ever. Yeah. whether you have profit or loss in a stock. Very well said. And I think that I was trying to say the same thing with, with Jordan not being in it today means he he would he's basically a seller of GAN and me staying in it, that's me betting that it's going to keep going up and that I like that as a longer term stock and something that I want to be in. But every single yeah. day, yeah, you're you're looking at your 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 portfolio is a blank slate every day. And if you don't like what you're in, you sell it. And if you want to be in something else, you're, or stay in something, you're buying it. It's, there's, there's no such thing as a hold. We've, we've talked about that many times. Buy, buy, sell, or hold was the worst show on CNBC because hold was the easy answer, but it's always the wrong answer. The, you, you can't, you can't Dave, hold the stock. you know, you're going to get me, you start talking about the word hold and you're going to get me going and I'm <laughs> not going to stop. It's going to turn into like a, like one of those crazy episodes where I'm yelling for 20 minutes straight. So I'm going to forget we even said the word hold because there should be no word hold in your portfolio, just yeah. buy or sell. I do want to m mention, we and we've kind of touched on it, but uh, how do you guys profit from SpaceX? Uh, given that they are a private company, they haven't announced an IPO. They are a private company, but Chris and I are investors in it. We bought shares in the, you know, they continue to raise money outside of the public market from accredited investors. And so that's that's how Chris and I got involved. We got a very small piece from a fund that was buy that was allocated some shares the last time they raised. How much were they raising? That's like uh, five hundred million dollars or some crazy amount. I can't I can't remember. We got a very small piece, but it was still a reasonably big size investment for us. It wasn't like a drop in the bucket. Exactly. I just saw I just saw a super chat go by about our RCL Royal Caribbean cruiser going to cruise calls that I mentioned earlier today are up 15% today, Chris, congrats. I know that you're still holding those. You, you may have rolled out of the ones that you were in. I own the ones no, that are printed no. on the t-shirt. No, Dave, Dave, because we got t-shirts made with the actual option on it, I had to keep those exact. There's no way I could sell those options. I feel like I have to keep those options to expiration. Like I've never <laughs> felt like that before. I'm not going to wear the shirt like in public 
And then if someone asks me about it, they're like, oh, so you bought those options? I'd be like, well, I sold the other options. No, I'm, I'm keeping these options. For, I'm prepared to lose all the money in that if, if necessary. I'm going to hold those options through expiration. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, question here regarding uh, Vista Outdoors. If they can't keep up with demand, do you think that they that the stock will keep going up? Um. I, you know, I, it, it's hard to tell if the stock's going to keep going up or how investors are going to perceive their situation. The reason why I'm invested in Vista Outdoors is I feel like everything's going right for the company right now. It's a company that's in a turnaround. Uh, they were not the greatest of all places the last couple of years. Uh, and now all of a sudden, it's like, could you write the, we talk about this all the time, right? Could you write the dream ticket for Amazon? Like, what would actually be the dream scenario for Vista Outdoors? Yeah. Well, we would have a pandemic that would send most of the world into shelter in place where they can no longer go on vacation like normal vacation, but they can still go rent cabins and go fishing and hiking and the great outdoors, which is 50 percent of their business. Oh, and then, by the way. Um, there's civil unrest happening. So everyone's freaking out because the police can no longer really guarantee protection for their homes or their business. So everyone's going crazy buying ammunition and guns and all that stuff. Like that would be the story we would make up for Vista Outdoors, right? Yes. If we made up a story. And that and, story and is we're reality. We're going through it. It's what's actually happening right now. Yeah. So how could I not just think I got to be invested in that company and I got to be invested heavily? Is it going to go up 5% or 50%? I don't know. Or is it going to go down? I don't know. But like, I, I, I feel like anytime you have a situation that is an anomaly in the market or for a particular sector or for a particular company, when it's a black swan anomaly like that where everything is just perfect, the market generally doesn't fully discount that information. They, they don't fully appreciate it, right? It's very yeah. hard to fully appreciate it. Because it's like, can it really all be that good? Yeah, it's actually all that good for Vista Outdoors right now. And it's never going to get better for them. So I, I see myself owning Vista Outdoors until the whole world is talking about how amazing it is, which is probably going to be, I hope, their next earnings call, which is like in two months, right? So I see myself holding them through two months. Let's see how big of a quarter they have. Let's see the degree to which they raise guidance for the following quarter. Um, I think it's going to be a hell of a summer for them. Um, this next question is actually something I was thinking about this morning with all that's going on and people out in crowds. This, this is a question, uh, barring a huge breakout of CV from this, from the riots, uh, can it possibly prove that large gatherings are okay? Can sports and concerts and everything go back to normal? This kind of is a uh, test ground for, um, seeing something that we haven't seen is, you know, people going outside with some with masks, some without masks, outdoors, some face to face, some, I think that, and I heard a, uh, a medical professional doctor or something on the today show this morning. Basically I, I read, I read something and I think the New York times saying that the, um, the, the people are saying that it's, uh, because it's outdoors and you're not in close contact with the same person for very long, it's reducing your chance of, catching the virus or the flu or anything. Um, but another that prolonged exposure outside and with a bunch of different people is increasing. And that, that over the next, you know, three to five days, if we see an uptick in cases, that might be a predictor for how things are going. So I think that we're kind of going through an interesting experiment with people gathering outdoors and it might be telling for our trade that, that I'm in uh, live nation um, and the other sporting venues, uh, and, and those type of trades. Yeah. I mean, so it's, but it's more than like three days, right? We're looking at seven to 10 days, um, to 14 really to 21. We really? see, yeah. Right. But I yeah, think it's something I, I, to watch. I agree with that. It's a, it's a great, it's an inner, it's a great, it's a terrible experiment, right? It's a terrible yeah. experiment. Yeah. Um, but it, it is true that, uh, in the, these cities, like, uh, you know, especially the early cities where there were a lot of protests, um, even though a lot of people were wearing masks, it's a lot of people that are yelling. Anytime, and we know this, We've choirs seen, was exactly. kind of the biggest place, right? Where it was being, when you're yelling and screaming, you are projecting COVID, if you have it, right? Projecting it on people. 
And I actually am con somewhat concerned. I think it's the story not a lot of people are talking about. Like, we are going to stay on top of this, guys. Like, I, I, we have on our Discord group, we have that second wave channel. And as soon as I catch up on all the questions people have been asking us over the next few days, I'll be spending some time in the second wave group. Jordan, I know you're on top of all this stuff. We really got to pay attention to the, some of these cities uh, where these protests have been happening and just any little uptick. Uh, it it's, will. It for me, it's a concern. Like I, I'm going to be very closely watching this stuff over the next two weeks. For and sure. this this will be something that we do address probably in a future live show. That, that that will be the topic is did we see a second wave? Yes or no? And what do we do? Um, it it probably this Thursday is too soon to tell, but maybe sometime next week. That's that's a topic that we definitely need to cover. Yeah. Agreed. Uh, Agreed. Question about, are you guys invested in Virgic, Virgin Galactic? No, we're in SpaceX and Virgin Galactic is uh, you know, Richard Branson's version of, uh, of space. And I'm, I'm not in that one. I'm sticking with SpaceX as my, all of my exposure to space. Dave, I don't think we fully answered the last question, though. They want to know how we make money. And I think it's important uh, to discuss the plan for SpaceX investors. For those of us that are invested in SpaceX... The concept is twofold. One, they are going to spin out a company in a couple of years called uh, Starlink. Uh, Starlink, uh, Jordan, you could you know more about it than I do. Even I think it's like a satellite company. Jordan, how does Starlink work? Yeah. So um, the problem with the satellite internet has been that the satellites are like way too far away from you. Um, so they're like in uh, like a geostatic orbit right which is like a long way away so the concept of starlink is they're going to deploy a whole mesh system of uh satellites in like a low earth orbit um so that the latency is less right so you get to your uh your uh you know your communication speeds are faster your latency goes down um uh, at the risk of these things being uh, impacted by the atmosphere a little bit more so they're gonna have to constantly i, I mean from what I understand, that they probably have to constantly put new ones up there as uh, some of these things start to slow down and deorbit a little bit, uh, because they will do that if you get, you know, too far down um, towards the atmosphere. Um, so the concept is, Jordan, this will give us better internet, more broadly covered globally, right? It's like gl fully full coverage internet, essentially. Yeah, and it might not be, you know, it really. I think the biggest use case for this stuff is. Um, you know, in places that you don't have fiber, right? So if you don't, I think obviously your best choice is probably fiber. Um, after that, maybe cable, um, and then the options start to slip really fast. And so if you're in a rural area, um, you know, your your only option right now is to have satellite internet that's terrible, right? Um, yeah. Decent download speeds, but your upload is terrible. The latency is ridiculous. Um, and so basically anybody outside of a major metro um, this is going to be your internet connection from now on. So, um, and, and so basically, and also, thought, so like, so like, it's not tied to like plugging, you know, a cable in. So if you move or whatever, you just your internet's the same. You just have this box that talks to the satellites, and uh, who cares where you are, right? But our thought was, you know, Virgin Galactic was such like a Wall Street bets cult stock. And we saw what happened with them. And very early on, we said, wait a second, this is so hot. And people were already buzzing about uh, Starlink, right? That yeah. is a subsidiary of SpaceX. We said, let's go out and figure out a way to buy SpaceX stock. Yeah. Because we think that this spinoff of Starlink is going to be the next big cult stock. You, you combine Elon Musk with space, with internet, right? Like, like. So the thought is that when they actually IPO that company, not SpaceX, but Starlink, when they IPO Starlink, that that company could be valued as much as our entire investment is valued today in SpaceX, which is just about $30 billion. That's how, yeah. what we, we got into SpaceX just about $30 billion. So if Starlink IPOs and gets to $30 billion because everyone's like going crazy over Starlink and it's one of these cult stocks, then we basically just paid for our SpaceX investment. And now we own SpaceX for free. Now, SpaceX is a company that they say they're never going to go public. We'll see. They say they're never going to go public. But that's that's okay with us because we we were getting into it not for SpaceX, 
in itself, but in all of these spinoffs, Starlink being the first. And we literally, on this very live show, before we even created the second channel for our live shows, we thought about it, talked it through, and within a couple of days, sourced shares in that round that SpaceX was running uh, or raising. And it was that was that was our that was our space play. I was I was in Mexico. Yeah. I was losing all my money in Mexico because I wasn't watching the stock market enough. And that's when we got into SpaceX because we knew that that was going to be the, the way to get into their spinoff companies. Yeah, and that's when Jordan said, are you guys crazy investing in a space company in the middle of a what's going to be like a, 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 this horrific situation? And you were probably smart at the time to be being like, hey, I'm out of this. You guys can go out. either way. Look, I mean, I, I would like to be in it. Um, but I, I, I read a few articles that did some back of a uh, napkin math on the Starlink um, company and like what its potential is for growth. And basically, you know, that $30 billion valuation was like fully baked out, <laughs> you yeah. know, uh, assuming like all these, you know, if it got a certain penetration number or whatever that, you know, that was basically yeah. like a fully baked in price a few years yeah. after the IPO, which I don't know. I mean, you know, it seems like his companies tend to go more than uh, than some of these valuation prices. He, that he people met right, his... Jordan. That's the thing. If, if you think about it rationally, Jordan yeah. is like a thousand percent right. And my thought was, who is rational have, when it it's comes? It's going to have so much hype, though, Elon so, Musk, right? Yeah, it'll have it'll have it'll have all this hype. I'll be wrong, and uh, <laughs> you guys will make money. So, <laughs> 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 so. Um, so, that, so that's our SpaceX. And by the way, I want to say something else about SpaceX. And this is, I think, a big part of the movement, the retail investor movement that is younger people getting involved with trading is that, you know what? When we control our money, we control what happens to this world. And I would love to say that we can make our money back on SpaceX and maybe make a profit. Maybe someday we make a good profit on SpaceX. But even if we don't, I love the fact that I am contributing to doing something great that I think SpaceX is going to do over the next 30, 40 years. SpaceX is going to do great things for our civilization, for humanity, maybe new discoveries, maybe open up our mind about things. And I love that even if it's an irrational investment, that, hey, we're going to actually do something great with this money. And that makes me feel really good. Um, and that's the cool thing about investing is not only hopefully do you get to make money on your money, but you get to support things that you think are important. And a lot of the times we make investments not just based on profit alone, but we call it, you know, based on the joy of investing and 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 trying to do good things and trying to spur innovation and humanity and all this stuff. And SpaceX is the perfect example of that, I think. Tesla kind of is too, quite yeah. honestly. And and I think that a lot of a lot of the younger investors out there do put their money where their minds are. You know, it's, it, they invest in things that they that they like. They like the the way the company is managed or things like that. You see, the Robin Hood uh, investors of the world do invest in things that that you may not be investing in purely because you're going to make a profit. And I'm, I'm hundred percent with you on that. SpaceX being one of those companies that, that is doing revolutionary things um, for the world. And Dave, I mean, it's got, it's gotta be the, the coolest uh, just coffee table talk investment that we have. Exactly. Like when I tell, tell people when I'm like, I'm at, like hanging out with other kid, people in the neighborhood and I talk about investments like SpaceX every time now, it's like, oh, they want to talk about that. So it, it's it's fun. Exactly. No, it's it, it is. And some of those in our in our uh, startup portfolio as well. We invest in it because we like the founder and we think they have a, a good idea and it, they have the right team in place. But we generally just want to support the idea and and give it its best chance at survival. Um, and, and often those are the interesting ones you talk about at cocktail parties, too. Yeah. Um, so Justin Feldman was asking the question um, about revisiting when opens up June 4th in states, but they're discounting rooms. And are people really booking up to go to Vegas? Uh, stock has more than doubled from low. So that's one that I'm still in. Chris, I think you didn't you sell your win while the president was giving a press conference and then buy it back right after? Yes, I sold my win uh, for, uh, I think it was a few hours. I was out of my win position and I got right back in. So I listen, you know, Justin, I, you know, I know you're the biggest win fan in the world. 
Uh, like Justin loves Steve Wynn, and, and, well, who's kind of an outcast now, unfortunately. But 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 uh, yeah, Justin, we're in Wynn. I I think Wynn. I don't know if they're going to bounce back this summer or this fall. Quite honestly, I, I they're up. They're getting back up there. But I'm in it for the long term. I think Wynn is a hundred and forty dollars stock at some point in the next eighteen months, and I'm more than happy to stick around to the end of this whole mess that we're in to when we have a vaccine and good news is back and we start the roaring 2020s. And whenever that starts, we think that when and all the other casinos, like all the liquor companies, like all the travel companies are all going to be on fire. Right. So, yeah, I, I, there's no way I'm missing out on that party. I mean, Dave, are you going to miss out on that party? <laughs> no, absolutely no not. Way. I'm I'm in when it's it is going to be a core holding for a while. And, um, I know that there will be that turning point where, where it is off the hook and everybody has to go to the, to the world world's biggest party and what better place than Vegas. Right. Yeah. And and also the, the Vegas of China. There will be people in California stopping in Vegas to party at win for two days before they continue their trip to Florida to get on the Royal Caribbean cruise ship to get the Caribbean. Okay. That's what it's going to be like, hopefully starting at some point in 2021 or not shortly after. Jordan, you and you and Win at all? No, I'm not in Win. I'm Win. Okay. I, 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 listen, 84 bucks is not high. You remember when Win was at like 115, 125, and we were like, gosh, this thing should be under 100. And then it finally dipped under 100 and it finally got to 80s. We we're like, now finally, it's where it should be, like in the 80s. And yeah. then it went all the way down to the 40s. And it was like, what? And we <laughs> bought it. But it's still so low relative to where I think it will be if when we get through this, right? When we get through this, it, I think it's it's going to see just – it's 140s, right? 140s, 150s, and beyond. So I, I love it here in the 80s if you have the patience. And I think they could sell that casino and they, uh, sell the land – uh, to someone else, same thing with Boston, and they could raise three to five billion dollars and have plenty of capital to get all the way through 2022 if they need to. Uh, it wouldn't be a good thing, but if they need to do that, and they could do a lease back provision, yeah, that's right. That's that their land. that's their backup plan. You know, I I, yeah. I am with you on that. Um, now this this next question is kind of an intersection of our outdoors uh, episode last week and today's. Um, topic of of what do riots and looting do to uh things so Corey asks you guys got to talk about dick's earnings it's tomorrow i'm invested in dick's uh uh, the outdoor play but looting uh it's a looting target perhaps fear of everything being looted is making people rush out to their local dicks today to stock up and their earnings are tomorrow so what what are they stocking up on because doesn't dicks they don't do firearms anymore they do not no but maybe just stocking up for their getting away they're outdoor you know trying to trying to take that road trip and they need all of their last minute camping and uh sporting equipment i don't know oh dave i did oh i did my my dicks pictures dicks <laughs> don't weekend. say that you did your dick uh, pictures <laughs> i did that i did that this Stop. weekend and i'm gonna text it to you right this second Okay. So you could see the par- now it's a little tough because the parking lot at Dick's is I'll send it to you and Jordan right now here. I just sent it to y'all. I did the one over on Park Lane. It does share a parking lot with Best Buy, but the the picture I took is the part right I was right in front of the Dick's Sporting Goods door looking out the parking lot and it was pretty healthy. There were people going in and out. Um I mean it was it was doing pretty well that was on saturday i think i went there uh mm-hmm. it might have been friday friday or saturday um so yeah uh, i don't know if anyone i've been at, not in the Dis- discord channel so i don't know if anyone else added to our picks for dick sporting goods um parking lots <laughs> <laughs> so this is your pick of dick sporting goods parking lot uh, let me see. Let me. I'm gonna quickly jump in our Discord. I know that we had a uh, channel set up just for uh, DPS, and let's we'll okay. see if uh, see if anyone else 
Um, did Santos. anybody else contribute? <laughs> I, I did my I did my job. I say I'm going to do something now. Jordan said he's going to do it. I can tell him a look on his face. He was just grilling all weekend, probably steaks, and didn't do it, right? Yeah, I didn't. I didn't do anything. I, yeah. <laughs> okay, here's here's one in Moore, Oklahoma, where the parking lot looks essentially empty. I would I would uh, I would say. Here's one in uh, Dixon, New York, where they have, yeah, you know, maybe thirty percent of the parking lot has cars in it. In this in this photo, all this right. is so this is so great having this as a resource <laughs> to be able to hey, just. Hey, you gotta add mine in there while you're do add it. <laughs> My picture in there. I will. I will. Um, um, there's another one from uh, up here in Massachusetts. Uh, still don't uh, still don't have anything except curbside pickup uh, at most stores beside Target, Walmart, etc. Uh, they're all dead. So yeah, n no no cars in the lot there. Let's see if I can find. Um, here's one. One thirty on a Sunday, the parking lot at Dick's was packed in Columbus, Ohio. This this is the best research I've ever seen. So it's like it's kind of hit or miss depending on the market. Some markets the stores are packed. The stores where they have maybe in store shopping, the stores where it's curbside only or closed, they're going to be empty. What do we what do we do for earnings tomorrow? This this is one of those points, Chris, where we have to decide: Are we buying dicks or are we selling dicks? Um, I, I'm in. I'm staking in. Listen, I, my dicks position is uh is is reasonable um it's it's it, i have a reasonable position in the let me see how much i got here i forgot how much i bought um i'm not selling man i'm i'm sticking with them because i think whatever the current quarter says i think i think they go no it's only going to get better for them i think over the next 60 90 days yeah so i i don't have that i didn't buy that much i bought 5000 shares but you know, I'm, I'm not selling. I'm not selling pre-earnings. I was in this for an earnings trade. So yeah, I have... I'm in the same boat, and it's basically unchanged from where we bought it the other day. Um, I'm, you know, literally even on my trade, up 0.19 percent. Guys, winner. I'm looking at my portfolio right now, and just it's insane. I, I mean, GAN is up 15 percent right now. My, it's insane. This is insane. I got breaking news, by the way. Breaking news. From our friend uh, Terrence Gordon. Uh, oh no! <laughs> okay, I'll read it here. Dumb money guys. Uh, not sure if, of course, Terrence was not watching. He says he's going to start watching right now. Uh, but this is coming from his mom, who's a travel agent. Dumb money guys. Not sure if this is in your plans, but I think the travel industry is about to explode. Flights and vacations are filling up. Every house in Florida was rented within three days after they were opened up the beaches. My mother, travel agent, a great travel agent, by the way. I've used her multiple times, and she is awesome. I used um, her for my honeymoon. She's, like, so much more professional than Terrence is, right? Like she, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm just kidding, Terrence. You're professional. Um, my mother tells me people are booking 2021 like mad. Uh, my RCL Gen 21 options are up 25% after being down 50% since March. Yes, we know RCLs are. I, Terrence, I'm with you, man. We know travel is a huge part of our recovery portfolio or vaccine trade, as we're, we've been calling it. Um, and yeah, we're in heavy, and I might go in heavier as soon as I see some more. We get closer to when we think these vaccine announcements are going to start to come out. And th this this might be even a more of a kind of regional thing, like people going to Florida where they may not yet be going to Vegas or they may be going to, you know, the the San Diego beach beachy places where they can maybe rent a house. Like think about yourself. You rented a house in Florida to drive your family to. You're not taking an airplane. You're not renting a car, but you very well could. But you're not you're not traditional travel you're not you're not the, the traditional travel sources aren't going to really benefit from the way you're doing it and i wonder how widespread the kind of modifying traditional travel plans will be across the way people travel this summer i i can tell you dave people are going to avis rental car and they're getting themselves a <laughs> nice big fat suv and they're, they're they're loading it up with all the food that they need to make at their airbnb vacation rental 
Okay, and they are driving out with all of their stuff that they bought from Dick's Sporting Goods. That is brands that are made by Vista Outdoors Portfolio. Uh, they're probably packing some heat just in case some riots happen while they're on vacation and oh with gosh. plenty of ammo from Vista as well. I could right? see a few. I could see a few. This is the world we flights. live in. I could see a few Southwest flights. Um, uh, yeah, maybe some Southwest flights for those people that are, you know, a little more willing to put themselves, live on the edge, right? Jordan, Jordan is <laughs> long, uh, Southwest oh. Airlines. I am out, I'm staying away from all airlines and I stayed away from rental cars, but kind of regretting it since you've been making so much money with your Avis rental car. <laughs> oh boy. What 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 a, what a time to be an investor, man! I, I you know what the problem is? All these new retail traders are coming into this market. Like you know, we've been doing this for three decades, and the adrenaline and the volatility and the money, like they're gonna think this is normal. And like, what's fascinating is that at some point, this is gonna kind of settle. And they're gonna freak out because they're gonna be like, no, 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 like, like, what stock am I gonna make like twenty percent on this week? Or they're like, that's just, or is that gonna be the new normal? Just because they will create their own volatility if it doesn't naturally exist because of some some spark in geopolitical stuff, right? Or there's not a, yeah. there's not this, you know, virus, right? Like it will just exist on its own. I don't know. When when the stock market gets back to its normal, it will be kind of a disappointment for all of the people who this is all they know. We we have we haven't seen anything like this. This this fits into the way we like to trade, unlike any other time. And we actually, when you were gone, Chris answered a question about. Uh, the question was basically. Normally you only have one or two high conviction trades per year, and you don't. You're not an active trader. You're not a day trader by any means. But no. this is this is a very rare time where you're trading way more frequently than you normally do because because everything is so volatile and because there are so many things that play into information arbitrage, the information edge that you might you're way more active than you normally would be. But this is this is not normal and this is not something that's sustainable. We listen, we we trade change like People say that they trade like market volatility. We don't really do that. We we actually we trade life volatility. When yeah. there's volatility in real life, meaning consumer behavior is changing, culture is changing, like that's what we trade. So yeah. usually there's not this much change happening in the world, but right now there's so much of it that this fits like this is so up in our wheelhouse. We, this is like the stuff that we've been planning for forever, and it actually has happened, right? And so this is what we do. This is where our <laughs> methodology really, really kicks in. Well, they want us to uh, keep making these great calls so that they can move out of their mommy's house. <laughs> <laughs> we're not making these calls for you. We're just telling you what we do. We're, we're not stock uh, in advisors. We are just uh, telling you what we are seeing in the in the market and, and sharing what we like to do. Um and, and as you've seen, uh, Jordan is cautious. Uh, and so I think a lot of people follow you, Jordan, because, because they know that you're like more hesitant to, to jump in. Well, the thing is, so I'm not actually that cautious. I just, I'm a processor. I like to be able to process information. And in this market, it's really hard to have enough time to fully process it. And you've got to act, um, <laughs> if you're going to, if you're going to capitalize, right? Because I'll like all these things that, Chris is making a killing in. I've been researching and I like, I understand everything about them and I just let them slip a little bit too far away yeah. from my comfort. Right. And so, you know, it's, it's a, it's a tough deal, but you know, yeah. I invest in uh, startups and I've, you know, very risky things. Yeah. Um, but I'm, I'm not the first to jump in either. So like right. Chris will jump in and then I'll see it go up 10%. I'm like, yeah, I still, I still believe in what he was saying. So I'll get in and then you'll see it jump up a little bit and then maybe you'll get in. Um, do, okay, this is actually a good question for this episode. Let's say that the unrest and riots keep going for a week or two. What would, would that move equity markets lower? What? I don't know what to think about that. Yeah, I I think they would. I, I, I think that sort of unrest that's sustaining that could start to impact uh, the economy, right? Like restaurants, 
Um, like people just not going out, not traveling as much. Like they're not traveling much anyway, right? But it, like we're trying to like s to get part of society. Those of us that that are willing to take risks, not me, but those of us that are willing to take risks, those people are starting to do things, and mm -hmm. that's starting to get the wheels turning. And anything to kind of you know how hard it is to get that wheel turning. Like at, at first, like a snowball, it's tough at first. Yeah. But like anything to pause that would be concerning. It's absolutely concerning. And I'm keeping a close eye on it. I hope this stuff blows over the next few days. But if it doesn't, if we if we get into another horrific weekend this next week, I, I might put a hedge on my account, you know, for... Yeah, I, I was I, really... I, I could totally see it doing that. Except for like a few things that make sense, like, um, you know, ammo and things like that. I was actually really surprised to see um, just an overall green day. Yeah, well, you know, I, I, was, I, was I was a little nervous... Portfolio, on the open, um, we saw basically futures were, were showing is going to be unchanged, which is, you know, definitely not enthusiastic for the market. So yeah. I was a little nervous at open, but I didn't I didn't change any of my positions. I mean, my 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 portfolio is trading like the Dow is up a thousand points right now and it's up ninety six. Like I, I it's, it's insane. And that's the thing. Like when I checked my portfolio yesterday, I looked through and I was like, is there anything here? That's super concerning. And so, you know, listen, I'm going to hold my travel stocks. That was concerning. But a lot of the stuff outside of travel and like, you know, entertainment, Dave, like, you know, the uh, Live Nation, I felt pretty good about. I'm like, a lot of this stuff is actually kind of defensive when it comes to this environment, whether it's outdoor stuff, whether it's, you know, like I said, you know, Vista or even the, the, the you know technology stocks, right? I don't think that stuff is gonna get impacted too much. Like if people get concerned, I'm not in, invested in Target, right? I'm invested in Amazon. And if, if it ends up that half the country, the Targets have to close their urban stores like they are here in Dallas, like that's gonna only help my Amazon, right? <laughs> right yeah. trade. Yeah. I'm not trading Walmart. I'm not trading a lot of these brick and mortar stores yet. I think the one yet, thing it did right? is, yeah, it. it we were on Friday or Thursday considering moving more into the brick and mortar stores. The, uh, what is it? Yeah. The uh, TJ Maxx's and the uh, Dollar yeah. General's and those those kind of stores that have been doing very well. This might not be the time to jump into brick and mortar because of, we, we, it's. I'm taking more of a wait and see approach. I'm not jumping in where, where as of Thursday, I was thinking that this was going to be the week that I was going to selectively get into some that are that are more focused on brick and mortar with a good e-commerce e presence. Yeah, Dave, that was our that was our episode today. It was supposed to be on that, and we decided yes. to delay it. Right. So, like, I agree. I'm just putting a pause on that thought for now, and we'll and because like Dick Sporting Goods is one thing; they have a pretty good e-commerce presence, obviously. So I'm not I, I'm going to stick with them for earnings, but I'm, it's not a, it's not a high conviction trade like Dick Sporting Goods is a relatively small trade for me. Um, I, I, by the way, is anyone going to loot raw stress for less? That, that seems like a, a lot of effort for really cheap stuff. I, I don't see them high on the loot list, but you never know, I guess. I mean, it's uh, to me, it's more a question of access. And if if they're in, you know, the areas where looting begins, every everything's at risk. And if you're kind of like, I'm trying to think of where our Ross is, it's it's inside of a building and then inside of a like you have to go down an escalator to get into that's the an, Ross. Is that is weird. that normal? I don't, no, I don't that's know. That's the only one I've Ross. been to. We have like one of those weird new urban Rosses. Like they don't do that. And most of the Rosses are just in a strip mall. Okay. Because we know? also have an urban target in that same shopping center that you have to go through. Like you, you go into an office building and then up an escalator to get to the target and down an escalator to get to the Ross. Yeah. We, we that might be the last surviving target in the city, honestly. <laughs> they, and they might be the only one that's open. But it's a totally different mix of products there, too. That's a way smaller uh, footprint in that store. And that, it's an interesting thing that Target's doing. And I, I actually, I like that that uh, concept. And we'll see if they do that in more cities as, uh, you know, it, it really depends on where people end up moving. If people move to the suburbs or, or beyond and can telecommute and use Zoom for all of their uh, working needs, that's that's one thing where, where Target doesn't benefit other than their online e-commerce just looking um, at what else we got any, any good questions Dave you see 
I'm just reading through. We've, we've actually already addressed it. A lot of these comments uh, came in, and I'm still I'm only about halfway through. I didn't want to lose my place, um, but people are are coming and commenting on things hey. that we commented on like 30 minutes ago. Uh, where I'm where I'm reading. Made, we have live comments a, down at the bottom here. Um, I made a bad trade last. I mean, it's relatively bad, but a bad trade last week. So. You know, for those of y'all that don't know, we're, we're you know, we love stock twits. We're close with Howard Lindzen. Uh, inve we're investors in stock twits, and he's, he was an investor in our old company, Ticker Tags. Uh, he put a tweet out last week that scared me because Howard is like such a Lululemon guy. He loves Lululemon. And he put a tweet out. He's like, I just sold all my Lululemon. He's like, it's just getting way overstretched. Like, I can't even believe how high it is. And he's like, I'll be back. I'll be back, but I'm out. And so I was like pulled up a chair. I wasn't even paying attention to Lulu because Michael Crockett just put a, a comment about Lulu moving again. And I was like, I was like, well, let me see how much. Oh, my gosh. Lulu is all the way back up. It's like done a clean double from its lows. Yeah. So I'm like, I'm not selling all my Lulu, but I sold half. I sold half my Lulu. And now I feel like an idiot for selling half my Lulu. Um, cause I want it back. I want all of it back. Cause I love the company that much. Like, I just feel like I need to be bigger in Lulu, but I'm not complaining, but it was like, it was a bad trade. And the next time I see Howard or talk to him, I I'm going to give it to him for putting that tweet out there and freaking me out on Lulu before it did yet another pop, another run the last few days. And yeah, Lulu is one of those that I, for whatever reason, and I don't really even have a good reason, but I just haven't added it to my portfolio, and and I regret it every uh, every time it goes up and has these amazing earnings and good news and everything's everything's great for Lulu, great for your portfolio. Uh, I saw a comment cruise across because I'm wearing an Under Armour shirt. What do I think about the Under Armour stock? I'm not buying it. <laughs> no, they're at all. I feel like they're here's they're, the thing. I mean, some of the things they tried to get into, they totally failed at. Tennis shoes, they failed at. Um, women, they failed at. Um, yeah, I just don't they, see real growth for the brand right now. Mm -mm. No, no way. Am I? It's it's a turnaround story that I. They're they're like it's a turnaround story that they they've had the greatest brand and their turnaround was basically how do we cheapen the brand to pump up sales temporarily, right? Yeah. Um, to, to, to like, now they're selling them in like Kohl's and all these places. And I'm like, that looks awesome short term. They can fill the channel with these massive brick and mortar discount stores like Kohl's. But what does that do long term to the Under Armour brand? Mm -hmm. Like absolutely kills it. It so killed it, right? Because it's no longer a premium brand. It's like a Hanes. This is like a Hanes t-shirt to me now. Okay, you know? but Jordan, all right, let's play the other side of the Under Armour story though. Yeah. How does how are we wrong about Under Armour? We're wrong about Under Armour if if they can pull off what Michael Kors did. Michael Kors did the same thing, okay? Yeah. They basically went cheap. All right, and they went wide distribution globally. They tried to become, and it, where you could, everyone was wearing Michael Kors, and it was so cheap anybody could sell it. You want to sell Michael Kors at CVS? We'll 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 send some to you. Like, and yet it worked so well for Michael Kors for years and years. I don't know if it's I don't follow the brand right now. I don't know if it's still working for them. So Under Armour might have a successful transition. Like we're they're giving up trying to go head to head as like a premium brand with Nike, but they're going to sell out. They might be able to pull off a decade long run as like this mass distribution brand. I, so, Hey, I don't know. I don't know, but I'm not putting my money on that bet. Okay. I'm not going to do it because they, you're, Jordan, you're right. They, they had a three legged stool that they had a, that they touted for years. They were like, we're going to kill it in international we're going to kill it in women, and we're going to kill it in shoes. And if we can kill it in those three areas of opportunity, the sky is the limit. They failed with shoes. They failed with women. And, you know, international, there's still a question mark there. But based on the reputation of the brand, internationally, they like to strong brands, right? And so, like, I'm, I I agree. I'm out on a normer. Yeah. I did but see. That, uh, who knows? Maybe I did they can see. pull off this weird private equity type of play. I saw 214 Interactive commented while you were talking um, about the Rock uh, and, and his brand within Under Armour, perhaps uh, helping the brand. And I'm just I'm, I'm like, you know, I'm not familiar enough with what's going on there. But that is 
Um, oh, and look, Microcores is reporting earnings tomorrow too. So, hey, you guys, rock, you guys in the Twitter in the in the chat are amazing. So, so give them credit. Yeah, I mean, The Rock is definitely a positive for Under Armour. There's no doubt he, he's a positive. I, I, it's not enough. It's not enough. And by the way, I don't. I haven't done a lot of research on, on Under Armour the last few months. Like I don't know, but I, I'm, it's not enough for me uh, to kind of get behind them. But it's possible. By the way, um, who was uh, – what was the other brand? Uh, it wasn't The Rock. There's another brand I'm thinking of. It's a very similar – oh, uh, not Domino's, Papa John's and Shaq. Shaq and Papa John's. Man, look look what he did. He helped propel Papa John's here, man, the last yeah. six, 60 days. So who knows? Maybe The Rock's a bigger deal than I even realize. For Under Armour. And, so, I don't know, man. If I'm looking between, if I'm going to get an endorsement between The Rock and Shaq, I go Shaq all day long. Yeah, but Shaq's so diluted. He does like so yeah, much stuff. You think his he's brand's awesome. diluted? No, he he's he uh, is the face of dumb money. We have we we have uh, we haven't talked about our brand deal, but he's going to be uh, promoting our channel. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't that be funny though if he was wearing a dumb money T-shirt? I'm going to send him one just in case. Please but do. I, I'm a, Please I do. actually just pulled up Papa John's website and I don't see any uh, any mention of Shaq. I now I haven't gone beyond the homepage, but you would think that they would put it on. Oh the homepage. yeah, no, Shaq, Shaq, Shaq was like the face of him the last six months. Um, I don't know, maybe his deal's done now. It's possible. <laughs> yeah, he's moving yeah. on to bigger and better things like uh, like being the spokesperson for dumb money. So this this is a this is a question we get all the time, and it was probably when you weren't here, Chris. But Jordan, what are you in right now? And what am I in right now? And Chris, let's let's talk about like uh, what, what our biggest holdings are. My biggest holding is Amazon, um, although not as big as you guys. Actually, my biggest holding is cash right now. But uh, other than that, it's Amazon, uh, Southwest Airlines, Polaris. Um, I've got uh, some ski do. Um, what else do I have? Um, right, I'm just got like a bunch of random stuff too. I've got. Home Depot and, um, yeah. Uh, my biggest holdings, I'm also, my biggest holding is Amazon followed by Shopify, Apple, Tesla, and GAN. Those are, those are my, by, by, uh, dollar amount. Those are my top holdings. Chris. Uh, you know, I, I, I have to share this with you guys and our viewers because it's, and I hate this. I, do not want this coming off as like bragging, but like this is our community, and you know, like I want to share the good days because you know there's going to be some really rough ones or have been in the past. We started the show. I was up five ninety eight. Now it's it's up seven hundred eighty four thousand. My count on the day. It's how it. That's five point one nine percent. Is that insane? That is insane. insane. So I'll I'll tell you my count here. But that's because GAN Amazon. is up fifteen percent. Unbelievable, GAN. I'm up 213,000 just today in GAN alone. Okay, so uh, Amazon, huge holding, as you know. Uh, I have um, how many shares? 1,000 shares of Amazon, 60,000 shares of GAN. I still have 30,000 shares of Peloton, a couple thousand shares of Apple, 25,000 shares of Avis. I got 15,000 shares of Do, D O O O, um, uh, which is C Do and Can Am and all that stuff. I got, got still got a. I sold off a lot of my Shopify, but I still have 700 shares of Shopify, 300 of Booking.com, 10,000 shares of Fleer. Remember Fleer, F F L I R, 3,000 shares of DocuSign, 50,000 shares of that weird oil energy transfer company with the symbol ET that we still haven't gotten around to researching or talking about much yet. Yeah, I, I have some um, just just because we were planning on researching it, and I still haven't done any. Uh, 50,000 shares of Sabre, uh, 4,000 shares of um, Polaris, PII, uh, 6,000 shares of Logitech. I sold a bunch of my Logitech, but I kept a bunch too. 1,000 shares of NVIDIA, 60,000 shares of Ford. Okay. I got 2,500 shares of Lowe's, 20,000 shares of um, uh E L Y, which is the, uh, the golf company we talked about in last week's episode. Uh, what's it called? Callaway. 
Callaway. Callaway, and also the golf leisure destination place for fun. What's it called? Top Golf. Top Golf. Um, okay, so then I have a thousand shares. Oh, I had two thousand shares, but now I have a thousand shares of Lulu. <laughs> um, uh, Fifteen hundred shares of Twilio. I did sell some Twilio. You know, Dave, I got scared last week. I know. At one point, it was a week. So a little Twilio. So I got 1,500 shares, still a Twilio. Uh, I have 2,000 shares of DEO. Someone needs to remind me what DEO is. Uh, John Deere, right? That's, that's John Deere. No, DEO is that um, liquor, the, uh, tequila. Oh, Diageo. Oh, Diageo. Diageo. Yeah. Your, uh, your Don, Don Julio, Julio play. That's what it is. Yeah. yeah. Don Julio and Casamigas, the summer tequila. All right, 2,000 shares of DEO. I got 1,000 shares of AM. T remind me was that one of our like applied uh, materials? That's American Tower. That is oh, the yeah, that's right. Um, the towery, the five G re. Yeah, they do a bunch of bunch of towers and a bunch of buildings. Okay, um, I have eight thousand shares of Penn National. Why? Because you millennials and Gen Zers are out of your mind crazy, and I know that as soon as they announce the Barstool apps betting app in like Q three, you're all gonna go nuts and buy more Penn National. Um, which I think is ridiculous, but whatever. Uh, okay. I have 3,000 shares of Zen. And every time I say that, I think I want to say Zenefits, but it's not, it's not Zenefits. It's, no, it's Zendesk. It's, uh, Zendesk. Zendesk. The, okay. uh, the desk.com competitor. 1,500 shares of, uh, of um, STZ, which is Constellation, Constellation Brands. Brands yep. Right. Uh, that's the other liquor and wine company. Why? Because people are drinking a lot now. They're going to drink even more when we get back to normal life because they're going to be celebrating for the next two or three years. So why not? Uh, 3,000 shares of Win Casinos. We talked about that this episode. Uh, 5,000 shares of LYV. And I don't even know what that is. It's Live, Live Nation. What? Live Nation. Live Nation. Live Nation, Live Nation. <laughs> Three thousand. How much? How many? How many of your portfolio holdings do you not even have any idea what they are? Dave, you know that normally, I am normally so you have like eight stocks, and today you have like forty. I'm used to having like five stocks in my portfolio for the past thirty years, and now I have like sixty. So I can't keep up with it. But I'm in love with all these trades. I can't let them go. Anyway, I have a. Uh, 1,000 shares of Home Depot, 2,000 shares of Disney, 6,000 shares of AMTD. We know that one? No. Yeah. It's got to be something we've done before. Hold on. Hold on. Uh, AMTD is TD Ameritrade. Oh, yes. I was supposed Rain. to sell that. Uh, <laughs> what, was I, what am I doing? i got to sell that. Okay, I'm up. I'm up. Five percent since I bought it. That was a trade. I didn't talk about that one with you guys, did I? You did not. No. I thought we did talk about that. I don't it was, think it so. Was I might keep it. I don't know. I, I just was that just like, playing the influx of uh, new investor money. Is that kind so of a? We were. I, I did that. So I did this Benzinga talk on Friday, right? And in the Benzinga deal that we're, t I was in the Benzinga conference. The, the the moderator at Benzinga said that they saw their web traffic in the last 60, 90 days, get re ready for this, triple. They saw it triple in the last yeah. 90 days. Triple. That's how much interest there is in investing right now. And I, I saw just, Charles I Schwab had a similar like, these brokers. yeah, I saw, I saw a similar stat and I, I can't remember where it was, but the, they had an insane influx of new traffic to their website. Maybe it was in a web trends or something, but there is a lot of new money going into, um, what do you call it? Into the stock market. I've never into had more people ask me, hey, should I get a Robinhood or a TD Ameritrade account and all this stuff? I, I get asked that once a week now. I mean, we go on and Wait, talk our mean? nonsense and have like over 400 people watching us. We have 453 people this very minute just listening to, <laughs> to you read, rattle off what you have in your stock portfolio. And I, Dave, First of all, I'm only halfway done. And, and, and second of all, by the way, can if any of our, our audience if our, give us some credit? Like we get we get contacted daily by these online brokers that are trying to pay us to promote them on this channel. Two free stocks. And we're like, 
You what? Two free stocks down below. We do not have yeah, two free stocks like, down below. We're not. We're not, we're uh, not sponsored by because, anyone. You know why, guys? Because we respect you so much. We're not taking that dirty money. We're not going to take it. <laughs> we're just going to tell you what we think, and you can't pay us off to talk about your brand. You know, I'll live to regret that someday. We're going to be someone's going to make us. A someone's going to make you an offer, offer you can't what? refuse. And we'll be wearing Benzinga hats and like all nine yards when when Jason Rasnick wires me some money someday. But no, someday. But we, right now we're not touching that dirty money. Uh, Next time I see you wearing anyway. a Benzinga garment of any type, I'm going to ask where my money is. I'm not even going to say that name again unless Jason wires me some money. <laughs> like I, I want some money if he's watching. All right. Anyway, uh, I have 4,000 shares of Royal Caribbean. As we've talked about this episode, 5,000 shares of DKNG. Well, that must be Dick's, right? That's Dick's Sporting Goods? No. No, that's no. DraftKings. Yeah. DraftKings. I forgot about, again, that's another one of those stupid millennial trades because you guys are going to gonna bid it up way, way bigger than it should be. <laughs> so I'm just riding on your coattails on that one. Absolutely no strategy there. Uh, I have 500 shares of Netflix, and I'm a little light in Netflix right now because I feel like this is not. You know, this is not a sweet spot for Netflix. We've kind of, I, I made so much money in Netflix this last quarter. I took most of my profits. I couldn't quite sell it all, but I'll probably get in heavier Netflix at one point. Uh, 5,000 shares of UDR. That must be a REIT, right, guys? No U idea. UDR is. I'm going to look it up. UDR. Uh, UDR Inc. I don't know what UDR Inc. is, <laughs> but that's a ticker on the NYSE. I see a photograph of apartment buildings um, when I'm looking at their <laughs> quote. So it's one of I'm those residential a luxury. Yeah, a luxury uh, apartment uh, REIT that I like. Yeah, I remember. I remember, I remember when, you talking about this. Yeah, I remember when our builder, uh, our buddy Robert, uh, greatest builder, one of the greatest builders in town, other than our other buddy uh, Ryan Osborne. Uh, told us that that his apartment buildings were like a hundred paying a hundred percent of their rent basically and we're yeah. like okay but we need to buy one of these luxury apartment rates yeah you got in that so one that and was... i got into a different one which is up big today it's not one of my top holdings so i didn't mention it but uh brg i think is the one that i'm in blue something uh, group so... uh, blue rock residential and it, it's up uh five, it's up almost six percent today nice mine's only up uh 2.6 but how about uh, M is in Mary PW? That must be a REIT. I have 10,000 shares of that. That's got to be a REIT, right? Uh, maybe the medical Medical, REIT? Properties, medical properties. Yeah, trust. medical properties. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then I own 5,000 shares of Dick Sporting Goods. We already talked about that. Oh, here's a stock that I maybe want to do another episode just on, Dave, because I feel like it's trading at a level to where there's a still some good, really good upside. Roku. Uh, I have 1,500 shares in Roku, and I'm contemplating going in deeper on Roku because I feel like it's been unfairly kept down right now. That was that was and one that came up earlier when we weren't on uh when you when you had gone to deal with an emergency and they are they are trending up today um and they are not at all time highs. I Roku's a company that I like. It's it's in my portfolio for sure. Uh we just gotta do more work. I know if Justin Feldman's still watching he's hating this because he thinks his Roku's going to zero. But I, I, but I have Roku, 1,500 shares, 2,000 shares at Expedia, and that's really just my way to participate with Dave and his Airbnb private investment that he left me out of. So I gave Expedia, you a chance. I gave you a chance. There were there was an allocation for you. I, I you declined. I pulled the and, and just couldn't pull the trigger on it. I couldn't pull the trigger on it. But 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 you know they own uh, VRBO and HomeAway, so I'm competing with Dave's Airbnb. But Dave, listen, Dave, if Airbnb does well, VRBO will do well. They they, they rise and fall together. Um, five thousand shares of Yeti. That's one I don't want to have for much longer. But for now, ten thousand shares in Mastercraft. Uh, you know Jordan's the uh, Jordan's the guy that skis behind his boat. I don't, but I, I own the company that does that. Mastercraft. I'm judgy, so I I <laughs> I, <laughs> I use a uh, Nautique, but uh, no, yeah, Mastercraft's they're fine. They're fine. They're, they, they don't. They're not public they're, though. Yeah. Yeah. Mastercraft's right, fine right, as a stock. You just choose so not to I surf it. It just Scott, makes me nervous to buy a stock that's that thinly traded. What? I know, but I had yeah. to. I felt like I, know. I had to. 
Yeah. I, it was like part of my, it was part of my, I, I felt like I really wanted to like go in deep on that recreational motorsports trade. Yeah. That's and, why I liked, uh, that's why I bought Polaris and the, the Dew company. Cause they were uh, way bigger in those, way yeah. bigger in those, yeah. but, uh, John Deere, I sold most of my John Deere because they had, yeah. they killed it, man, that John Deere killed it, but I kept a little, a thousand shares. I just need to sell the rest of that John Deere. I should sell yeah. it right now because um, the trade's over for me. I made yeah. my money. Yeah. I should be out of there. You're not following uh, your own training of trading advice. I'm not because I'm so distracted. Like, don't listen to what I do. Do what I, what I say. <laughs> no, but don't do either because we're not financial advisors. So don't do either. When we're talking about methodology, not about actual trades, right? Methodology, follow the methodology, not the actual deal. All right. Um, 1,000 shares of SMH. I've got to figure out what I own in my portfolio. That must be another read. No, no, wait. I don't think it is. What's SMH? Um, SMH is uh, Vandic Vectors ETF uh, semiconductor. Dude, SMH is the semiconductor. Different trade that was a mistake wow i'm up big in that though <laughs> <laughs> i'm gonna sell that the second this episode is over that is gone uh two thousand shares of ruger maybe the most timely trade ever i bought that with like five minutes left of the market on friday okay before it closed out on friday I got those Ruger shares. Oh, Chris, listen to this. Michael Crockett gambling revenue down ninety three percent at Macau, and then I the rest of it went off the off the screen. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, oh, and Macau for win? Yeah, I, I don't know if it was win or not, but the, the comment went off the screen, so I, don't, I didn't. Yeah, yeah, no, they're, they're doing terrible over there. Like yeah. Macau has not yet recovered, not okay. even not even remotely recovered. Yeah. I know. Just something that. to keep yeah. in mind. Keep in mind. But the investors, of, of when, they all know that. Mark, yeah. Mark's comment is so true. You are more like a mutual fund now than ever. You used to be a pick, pick a dozen stocks and now you're just. No, no, that's not true. Because each of, this is a special moment in time. This is like not going to continue. Each of these stocks represents a, a thesis that we're trading right now. Some and that you don't even so remember. Many, opportunities right now yes i no i get it i get it i'm in way more than i normally am too i hope one of our uh, interns is watching and and getting all of the uh the the quantities and can load that into the uh the show notes section of our discord channel because this is this is an update that i haven't heard in a while because you're getting down into some right, stocks that i don't yet. even know uh five thousand shares in becn beacon roofing uh you know it's a company i've been trading for many years i Did actually you have you had that this whole time or did you buy more? Very little. Yeah. Very, very little. But yes, I have. And um, for me, it's more about when I, I almost have the portfolio to remind me to keep thinking about it. You know, when I, want to I feel like you were wrong. Because Disney like right is now, not your forever cool. stock. No. Beacon Roofing is your forever stock. <laughs> it kind of is in a weird way. I mean, like... You came to me five years ago and you were talking to me about beacon roofing. I know, I know. But it's like, it, it's not one that I'm really interested in right now, unless, <laughs> well, anyway, it's very small. Uh, 10,000 shares of SCS. I'm so embarrassed to have to look up the ticker symbols. Steel case. Steel, oh, I still own that? Steel case? <laughs> I got so you remember the thesis on that one? It was, okay, I'm selling that, guys. Like, the second this episode is over. I am up 7% in that total, though. Uh, the thesis on Steelcase was that although the office move movement, like, people are not going to work in offices as much as they did in the past, but offices would have to spend a tremendous amount of money to refabricate their offices this quarter uh, to adjust for new the new office environment with dividers and all that stuff. That was my thesis. The problem is I didn't have enough time to really go in deep on due diligence, so I I didn't buy a ton of it. But that was it. It's not like I bought it randomly. You're, so there's a reason. It wasn't random. Don't make yeah. Fun of me. It was all right. Uh, I'm, guys, I sold most of my RH, which is restoration hardware, but I still have 500 shares. Hmm. I sold most of it because I feel like it, I'm not ready to go in that deep. They, they, they're up so much, guys. We, 
Dave, how much did we kill it on that RH trade? It's I mean, insane, I'm right? still in it, and I'm yeah, up, I'm still uh, in it too. Twenty four percent. Even though the stock is down two percent today, I'm still up twenty over twenty four percent. Oh, I've over doubled because I think I bought it like in the nineties. Well, you got in way before I did. Yeah. I am up a hundred and forty six percent. Yeah. in restoration hardware and that's why i sold most of it but i have 500 shares left but yeah. i was like i listen at some point last week i had to start taking i had to start looking at my portfolio and shaving some of these crazy profits down like i feel most of the news is kicked out of restoration hardware i want to be lighter in it uh i still have 500 shares of zoom whatever uh <laughs> I, I have like I, i'm up I like 130 percent part of my travel in, uh, down trade yeah Jordan, you're saying you're up 130 percent in Zoom. In in restoration. Oh, in restoration. Awesome. I'm holding on to it. I don't have that much, so it's you know, I like it. I'm I'm staying in it too. No Zoom, Dave. I'm up only. I don't. I can't find. It. I'm up only 91 percent in Zoom. Only. So. <laughs> at what time? At what time in our history of investing have we seen these kind of like? overnight doubling of your money in just plain stock. We're not talking crazy options plays. You can double your money in crazy stocks right now that are the future of online work. Dave, if, if today, if the market keeps moving in my direction today, this could be a seven figure update. It's insane. All right, anyway, uh, 500 shares of TDOC, yep. uh, 5,000 shares of CCL. I don't know if I talked about the fact that I have diversified my Royal Caribbean investment to now include Carnival as well. You, you mentioned that so, when we were talking about the cruises. Cruiser is going to cruise. Uh, so here's one that I know I talked about. I have 1,000 shares of Johnson Outdoors, J-O-U-T. That was one we discussed in our outdoor episode last week. Uh, that seems to be doing I well for you. Have what? That seems to be doing well for you. Oh my gosh. Ready guys? Jordan, here's our favorite. I, I wish I would have bought more, but I'm afraid that when I go to sell this, I'm going to just crash the market for this stock. <laughs> 20,000 <000 laughs> shares of that weird Canadian bicycle company uh, that owns yeah. Cannondale and Schwinn. Yeah. D-I-I-B-F. Ready for this? I am up a staggering uh, what's the percentage gain in, in that? Uh, 139% in the last few weeks on that thing. Jordan, you're still in it, right? Too? Uh, no, I sold it like two days ago or something like that. Oh, you did? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I, when I sell it, I'm going to have to sell it like a thousand shares a day, not to screw up the market <laughs> and all of our followers that are also probably in that thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, 10,000 shares of BRG. That's got to be a REIT, right? That's, that's a Blue Rock group, the uh, residential REIT. I'm in that one. Yeah. Uh, 200 shares of TTD. What's, Not, doesn't what's ring TTD? a bell. TTD? Is, uh, TTD. Oh, the uh, trade, trade desk. desk. Trade I desk. I don't like that. I don't like that I'm in that still. That Because that's... Uh, yeah, they've kind of that was like a really short term trade. I'm up 52 percent, though. They had their run up and oh, they've just kind of uh, leveled it. off. I have some work to do when we're done with our episode. Five thousand shares of MPX. That is a REIT, I believe. Marine Products Corp. It's not a REIT. It is not a REIT. It is Marine <laughs> Products Marine Corp. That's, in your outdoor that's trade more portfolio. Of our recreational motorsports trade. Yeah. And people were making fun of me because, like, I'm so against having baskets of stocks. But when we, it's rare, though, that we have a sector trade as strong as the recreational motorsports trade. And I really did try to build myself like a little basket for that. Just same way with the outdoor basket that we built last week, right? You've built um, yourself a bunch of little mutual funds that are very. You bought. You built sector funds. You basically are running sector. a sector ED, ETF. Every time we have an episode, you buy a little basket of of stocks in outdoor motorsports and outdoor gaming and ammo and like it's it's you've gotten out of control. I think I we're gonna have to have an control. intervention, a trading intervention with you. And you see this smile on my face, like, you know, the episode is coming and I think everyone's going to love it uh, in a weird way when I am like in such a bad mood that I'm just like drudging just to get through the episode 
like talking about like how much I've lost and all these because I'm a little late to get out of these moves, right? We we'll, we can have a we'll thumbnail of you doing the 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 classic uh, internet like like everything's on fire, the the world <laughs> is coming to an end. You know, it, you, you've seen the thumbnails. If you watch financial YouTubers, you know the that that look. It's coming. Hopefully, it's not coming, but we all know it's coming. Um, you can okay, have so you can have like a, a week worth of majorly down days, and you'll still be up like two hundred percent for the month. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So I own uh, two thousand shares of S M N N Y Shimano. Are you up in that? Shimano. Oh, Shimano. Yeah, bought me some Shimano. Did you yeah. get yours, Jordan? No. <laughs> it's a too thinly traded. Well, it's just that it's a, it's a, yeah, I mean, it's a, uh, it's an ADR and uh, it's already it's up so much. It's thinly traded. I was like, yeah. this is the dumbest thing I've ever done when yeah. I bought it, but that's right. why I only got 2,000 shares. I just did it for fun, really. Um, so TCS is uh, the content. Oh, I forgot to sell that too. The container store. Oh. But it worked to my advantage. I'm up 34. Remember that stupid container store trade I did? Yeah, um, but yeah, look, you're, 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 you're doing great. Today, today's today's a great day to sell. Yeah. Yes, I'm selling trade that. Trade that. Okay, How lucky now, could you be? Here is the here's the, the weirdest trade of all that I got to sell this thing before it like completely implodes. There's this company, Mark, M-A-R-K. They like... FLIR is the institutional way to play thermal imaging, and MARK is the penny trader way to play it. The w This stock is going to implode at some point, right? Because, yeah. like, it's the weirdest little penny. But, I mean, you know what? Like, I I do love thermal imaging, and I didn't buy that much. I bought 10,000 shares of it, and I felt like I just wanted to, like, like diversify my thermal imaging trade. And the only other one I could find was this stupid penny stock mark. So I'm going to stick with it for now. Uh, now here's one that you're going to make fun of me for. This is so thinly traded. I bought a thousand shares of K W H I Y Kawasaki as part of my, it was part of my recreational motorsports basket. All right. I mean, I'm not I making fun of that any more than half of your trades. <laughs> I do want to talk about uh, a couple options I'm in. Uh, I remember those Ford calls I bought. I, I'm in the September uh, September 18th, so basically the September expiration, uh, $4 strike price Ford calls that are doing pretty good for me. Uh, mm -hmm. Those are up uh, 45%. Uh, the other options I'm in are the Southwest Airlines, LUV June, 25 strike price calls. Those are up 20, uh, 24%, so you know, doing pretty good. I'm in the booking.com, BKNG June, 1,500 strike price calls. I have five of those. Those are up 24%, so um, you know, that's, that's cool. Um, and uh, oh no, uh, that's wrong. I'm giving you wrong percentages. 64% up year uh, is what I've yeah, made in them. Up, it's probably up that other percentage today. That was, I think that was just for today. Ford is up 45%. And then, oh, my Southwest options are up 150%. Excuse me. And then, uh, do I have any other options? I'm really not trading a lot of options right now, guys. None of us are. I, I think that's it as far well, as Well, you options. have so, RCL. We know you have RCL. Oh, yeah, where are my RCL options in you here? You sold it, didn't you? No, I would never do that. I told you I would not do that. <laughs> Yet I can't find them. Like th to this bothers me when I have so many tickers, I can't find the thing I'm looking for, and they don't expire to 2021. So I don't. There's no way they would like auto fill, dude. I literally can't find them. I'll have to address this later. I know I didn't sell them though. <laughs> Two-hour episode, pretty good. We had nothing to talk about today. That was a comment that just went by. <laughs> we have a lot to talk about. We always have a lot to talk about. We just didn't know that we did. Why is it that the first thing that goes through my mind when this happens is that someone at, T someone at TD Ameritrade, I must have hit a margin call, and they just chose on they their own that? to sell my Royal Caribbean options? 
after I just got done telling everyone I would not sell them, now I'm pissed off. It's possible. I know I do not sell them. I will find them. <laughs> They've got to be in here somewhere. Okay. Well, if you if you're if you're almost done with your ticker list, I'm I'm glad to go. I just gave you my top five. I'm glad to just quickly. I'm not going to take 45 minutes to go through them, but we can go quickly through what I have too. Oh, before you start, Dave, I found them. I okay, forgot good. that I bought them in my retirement account. I have ten of the Royal Caribbean, the Dumb Money Cruisers, gonna cruise. To January 2021, $40 strike price options. And they're not up that much, like 36%. Um, so, yeah, I got those. That's it. I got 10 of them. Okay, good. I'm done. <laughs> what do you okay. got, Dave? What else you got? So, so I have um, 1,000 Amazon, 1,000 Shopify, uh, 2,000 Apple, 500 Tesla, 10,000 GAN, 30,000 ET, uh, 1,000 Restoration Hardware, 3,000 Live Nation, 3,000 Fleer, 300 Netflix, 8,000 Callaway, ELY, 3,000 Camping World, CWH, 1,000 Roku, uh, 2,500 Peloton, 600 Microsoft, 1,200 Thor Industries. Which one is that? Thor, Thor makes RVs. Oh maybe? yeah, they're the RV manufacturer. Yeah, I have I have that. I have a uh, Diageo, um, seven hundred shares of Diageo, three thousand shares of Yeti, a thousand shares of Match, uh, twenty five hundred Dick Sporting Goods, five hundred Teladoc, five hundred Royal uh, no, Crown Castle International. The uh, my, that's my five G play. I picked a different one than you, um, and I'm up. Uh, just what. 15% at this point, not doing amazing. Uh, when I have a thousand shares, 10,000 shares of that blue rock residential BRG, uh, 200 shares of, uh, what is that? Oh, Pepsi. Those are, that's, that's the one of my weird old, uh, dividend stocks that I didn't just clear out because I still like Pepsi as a, um, as a, you know, pantry stock when we were, when we were talking about those. And then uh, I have my Royal Caribbean, uh, what do you call it? The uh, cr Cruiser's Gonna Cruise, January 15, uh, 2021, $60 calls. That's oh, it. So I had, the, I had the $60 calls too. I wonder if I lowered them to 40. I wonder if that's what I did. That's we did have someone though. asking about, about rolling out of the 60s and, and you, may have, you may have done that. Yeah, maybe that's what I did. I still have the um, uh, the t-shirt ones. I bought them uh, I bought them at a different time than you, so my percentage is going to be different. But uh, I'm upset because I thought I kept the t-shirt ones. That was like that was like my novelty trade. Uh, but oh well, up. for me, it's up eighty percent from where I bought them. Nice, eighty nice. percent on a company that could literally just sink, go out of business, finito. <laughs> but they got bailed <laughs> out, and they're they're going to cruise again. We'll see when. You know, the cruisers are definitely going to cruise again. For sure. Um, I am going to, I'm going to book, I mean, do you feel, okay, so Terrence, what Terrence said is true. I mean, people are booking vacations, but it's like a different kind of vacation. Like when this thing is over, I am going to book so many vacate, like real vacate. I want to book a cruise, by the way. I'm booking another Disney cruise for my family. Uh, not next summer, but maybe the summer after that. My kids are still young enough to like do Disney stuff and get excited about it. Um, I'm gonna book when it so is, much stuff. Like when it is acceptable travel, and man. safe to travel, I'm also you know that I travel like crazy anyway. It's my it's my oh. favorite thing to do, and not being able to even plan that trip, I, I just the anticipation and looking forward to something I'm missing out on. So I I'm right. definitely gonna be probably doing several months somewhere in the world that is not here. Jordan, you'll, you'll do a little more travel, right? When this is, opens up or now? Uh, we're, yeah, we're going to, um, we're going to do something this summer. Um, we've talked about that before. Um, I don't know if I will ever get on a cruise like ever, <laughs> ever. Dude, you've got I'm even talking about the Disney cruise, cruise, man. We have figured out exactly why I don't do this. And it's called coronavirus. I do not want to, like, you never know when something like this is going to pop up and you get some crazy sickness. I'm out. Out. 
<laughs> I get it. I get it. You All should right, uh, you so... should look into. I don't think it's a public company, but you should look into the smaller uh, Viking cruises. Uh, that Viking cruise line. They have these like smaller. Uh, very interesting places of the world. They have river cruises in Europe. They have, um, like, Smithsonian also does like amazing, cool travel oh, and experiences. I've, but There's, I've told you my, uh, I've told you my rule, right? You don't, you don't uh, like to I travel by something that you can no, live in. No, I don't. I don't sleep on transportation. <laughs> that's it. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> well. I, uh, I'm apparently going to have to sleep on transportation because Megan is trying to buy an RV because that's, uh, but she's also going to go off and do that by herself without me. You just fly or you take the car and then you find a house or a hotel or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, we have so, okay. We have so many, I don't know how much longer we want to go because we have hit the two hour mark officially, but we do have a ton of other chats. We may, we may just a few more. Yeah. Knock them out. But I, I, so, um, we, I'm still way far behind, but we have a friend, uh, Francisco, uh, Francesco wants us to do an episode on unemployment plays that that's kind of interesting. Um, uh, th- that, all right, fine. We'll think about that. I mean, cause there are areas of unemployment, but it could, all right, we'll, we'll talk about that. Um, this, this is a question that, that we can answer. What kind of security measures we, we talked about it briefly earlier, but at our, uh, for your restaurant, for my bar, what security measures have we put into place? Well, y- you really can't do too much. It's having a security. Well, obviously we have, uh, you know, we have an alarm and we don't keep any money in the restaurant anymore, right? We empty that safe. We actually like keep the safe open. So there's like no one, if they break in, they realize there's nothing yeah. there to steal. Don't even waste um, the time. But we, we have a security guard and the concept is not that the security guard is going to fend off the restaurant. The security guard, when something goes down, is going to call the police. And then he's going to also call our GM, who's then going to call us. And then all of us, including our wives and everyone, we're all calling 911 and pressuring them to get down to the restaurant to save the restaurant. So, like, that's all you can really do, quite honestly. Or, the guy, you know, the liquor store next to our restaurant and that's what worries me. We're literally right next to a liquor store. Him and his like family are in there every night with AKs. Just they they close down and they just sit in there and they just wait and they just just defend it off. And like so yeah. So my concern is people are gonna hit up the liquor store first and they're gonna be like, Well, we're not touching that place. Like they're gonna see look inside the window and be like, Okay, we're out. And then they're gonna come next to our restaurant. That's my concern, right? But you know, that, that's all we can do is have security and then call the cops. And, and by, by the way, our security is owned by, uh, you know, an officer with the police. So, like, we, we have some pretty good ends. So, hopefully, we'll be okay. Um, so, while you were going through your portfolio, um, we did have some super chats come in. While we don't take dirty money from brokerages who are trying to get us to promote, we're planning to find a way to donate all of the super chat dollars that come in. And it is a way to... Like, I think that the engagement on YouTube is judged by how many people are actively, like the chats per minute and the number of uh, smashing of thumbs and likes and things like that. And super chats have to factor into the popularity of a channel. So it does get our attention. Uh, Jazz Jackson wanted to know which of our current holdings is your very favorite. I think we each have an answer and it's probably the same. Gan. Really? Right now? Amazon. Well, Southwest. Ah, that's your favorite. So, I'm not in it. I feel it. like it's got. It's, I feel like it's got good upside still. Here's the thing. I love Amazon, Dave. You know it. It's my forever. It's my forever stock that is not allowed to be a forever stock because it's all of our forever stocks. But is Amazon going to get me like like doing cartwheels in my front yard? When it goes up 20% a day, like GAN is, probably not this summer. GAN has potential, potential, potential to like triple or quadruple, which is excitement, yeah. Yeah. which is fun. Amazon's right? not going like, to quadruple so like, over the summer, and GAN is the one that has the opportunity to do some crazy move like that. I don't so. think it will, but it, it will. Right? Unless you like, see state laws change like crazy, like you start to see states like open up their. Um, yeah. 
I see states gambling, then like, that could go crazy. It I see states crazy. that are that are going to be impacted by their collection of sales tax, like Texas, yeah. which you know when businesses are closed, Texas is not collecting its money. They need to find a way to pay for stuff, and online gambling is um, is a possibility. Another right. another super chat we missed was from Riot Ryan Garrison. He wanted to know RCL calls keep the 40s and or 60s or roll up, and I think we kind of talked about that. Sounds like you actually rolled yours, and I'm in I the 60s. Kept mine, I would have kept mine as a novelty day, but I don't. I like uh, rolling uh, my option. I, I don't like. I don't know. I, if you think something's going to keep going up, I don't like owning options that are deep in the money. I just yeah. don't like because uh, I think you, you have all the downside risk, and you just there's a lot more downside risk in losing all that premium. So I like to I like to trade up my options, roll them up, and at some point. If Royal Caribbean gets much higher, I'll probably sell those options and purchase higher strike price like we normally do, right? Take our yep. profits. If we think it's going to keep moving up, buy something a little high, a little closer to, to break even a strike price or, or then, at the money. And then I just saw uh, scrolling through in the in the live chat, I saw someone. Um, I don't even remember what it what it said, but it basically it was asking. Hang on, I have to scroll. It was interesting, so I wanted to address it, but I can't even remember what it was. That's what happens when you um, are doing six things at the same time. Oh yes, they were they were reminding us that um, for my forever stock, I chose an ETF, which was VOO. That is still forever, but um, right now I'm I'm enjoying picking individual stocks because I feel like half of what is in the VOO are stocks that I would um, would probably choose to not own right now, right? So if that makes sense, Dave, I'm, Dave, I'm still, uh, I'm still long in VOO, but, um, there I, I'm, I've shifted so that I'm more heavily in, in stocks that I think are going to do better than the ones that I think could be the ones that are not doing as well. David 1217 Wolfbane 290 says, uh, dark question here, but are you considering the possibility of a currency crisis given the global credit crunch U S dollar shortage and ebbing trust in the euro dollar systems. Uh, here's the thing. Um, I, I'm not going to say that it's not going to happen. It's just not a question for today. Um, this is not something that we're going to be thinking about now. When things cool off a little bit and there's yeah, maybe it, down the road, we'll, we'll be concerned about a currency crisis, but it's not like smack in the front of my face right now where I'm really concerned, super concerned right this second, if that makes sense. So it's that's like we're going to kick that one down the road a little bit. And worry about it later. Um, yeah, it's it's it, it's the whole question of the stock market versus the economy, and the economy doesn't necessarily have to go in the same direction as the stock market. And we've we've seen the opposite of that going on right now, where you we have stocks going up and a big question mark for the economy. Yes, yeah, someone asking about repair companies. Like I said, yeah, Home Depot, Lowe's, but I don't know. This is such a concentrated thing in like big cities and like just one area of the city. Like, I don't think it's not like tens of thousands of businesses are getting looted. I think it's probably hundreds. Is that sound right? Of businesses are getting looted. Yeah, maybe no. a thousand. Well, and, and when we were talking this weekend, it's to me that is for the for the bigger companies having a few stores in urban areas destroyed is not really going to change the bottom line for the business. Now being closed for three months could, but having a, having your current inventory and glass repaired is, is not like a, a needle mover for Apple. Right. But it, um, it's devastating yeah. for a smaller, you know, independent boutique that has a, has an owner who's dependent on that inventory for their, for their livelihood. Yeah. Cor correct. Correct. Um, uh, Satoshi Gerbel says Chris needs to sit inside his restaurant with an AK. Well, I, I, I I'm not going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Although, uh, my business partner is contemplating it. Uh, <laughs> oh, really? So, but I'm pretty clear minded when it comes to stuff like this. And I don't feel like, you know, saving your liquor stock is worth your life. 
So. No, no, I'm having way too much fun on Dumb Money. Uh, I don't want to risk uh, this becoming a two-person show. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to stay right here. That's uh, a, that's see. that's a good reason to uh, to play it safe. I uh, Boundless is still in here, which is Turtle Beach. No, I'm not. I just read my entire portfolio. I'm not in Turtle Beach anymore. Uh, it was just it, that was a short-term trade. I think it went really well and. Uh, it's just not something I'm in. I might get in it again in the future, but I'm out of that one. Should we all start lobbying for online gambling laws, says Tim White at 105. Tim, that's not a terrible idea. Uh, <laughs> I think if you get heavy enough in a trade, uh, the concept of control... I don't know if I got glitched out there, but yeah, we should probably all start lobbying for for internet gambling laws. Yes. Well, we know they are, right? So we know DraftKings, um, for instance, is uh, lobbying at the national level. I don't know who's doing um, lobbying at the state level, but I'm sure it's going on. Well, it should be it yeah. should be us we, and and everybody yeah. watching. Buy some can and then lo- lobby for the uh, for, for the laws to change. Yeah. <laughs> oh boy. Oh man! So many questions, uh, I, and I can no longer look them up by time when you when you're calling out those times. So I'm I'm basically just having to scroll through like you are trying to find um, the questions. Day wait, this is awesome. Twelve fifty nine. I don't know if it's true or not. Because are are they cruising again? Because David Celesi says I'm watching this on an RCL ship. Are they cruising right now? I didn't even. Are they? They. You could work on the ship. You never know. Oh, that's or maybe true. they're cruising. That's, you could I don't know. This is Dumb Money Live. With- I want to know which ones you bought later. Make sure you got the right ones. I don't know um, what happened. I just triggered our um, did you, opening. Did you do the outro? Keyboard shortcut. Yeah. I- yeah, I need to, well, that's I need to figure out how to get rid of that. <laughs> that's the intro. Hey, where she goes says Disney cruises are the best. You have no idea. If you ever have an opportunity in your life, not just to get on Disney Cruise, but to do the concierge lounge, which is like the VIP area of the ship. It's like a ship inside of a tra- ship. It's like tra- traveling on a private yacht inside of a Disney cruise ship. It's so beautiful. The rooms are so insane. Like you get two bathrooms in your room. You have a you have like a, a, a private lobby with like butlers with like food and drinks. All it's amazing. I love that. I love that ship. If we can figure out how to have a Disney cruise that's not on a cruise ship, then I'm I'm in. <laughs> Somehow I broke the uh, the three shot of us, and now it is the intro. So I'm gonna have to fix that when we're off the air. But we're now doing this uh, big box, depending on who's talking. Oh, we got we got a uh, we got another uh, breaking alert from Terrence's mom. Uh, <laughs> she says from Regent Cruise Lines, as countries across the world are starting to cautiously evaluate plans and implement measures to operate once again, we too are working hard to put plans in place to come back stronger than ever. Business is extremely promising with solid demand for our brand of luxury cruising later in the year. However, we're seeing many pauses begin to emerge. Cross-border leisure travel uh, is, may not be viable in the short term. Uh, they're extending suspensions of voyages, including sailings, through July 31st, 2020. So a little, it sounds like more of the same there for the cruise companies. Yeah. Let's see. Anything else you see, Dave? I think Dave has left us. Oh, Dave's gone. Okay. Yeah, I don't well, see him. I don't Dave's see him in the chat. And, da- and Dave, well, we need to wait to Dave to turn the channel off. But someone says, watch out for Ford. That his dad works with them in Detroit and says the Mustang is a flop and management is totally clueless. Well, mm. I think that might be correct, actually. Yeah, because that's the weird thing. has EV nothing thing, to right? do. What? That's their new EV thing, right? The Mustang. Yeah, they yeah, converted listen. it from their cool sports car to like being a weird uh ev play right yeah so let me just state this guys i am going to be so out of the ford trade before that ev car becomes relevant first of all they've sold every one of those ev cars uh that they've announced so far so they're sold out 
Um, it could be a total flop, and I agree. Ford management probably is completely clueless. Um, I am not in Ford for the long term. This is a summer trade on Ford, okay? Uh, it has to do with people temporarily going out and taking advantage of the financing specials, mainly buying trucks uh, because gas is cheap, financing is cheap, and they want big trucks to do summer vacations in, okay? So like, and again, I think in the South where people buy trucks are most likely to get out and go to car dealerships. This has nothing to do with like my love for Ford. I don't love Ford, the company. It's a short-term trade for me. Um, let's see what else we got here. Okay, Danny H, you will know, <laughs> this is so true. You will know the pandemic has really passed when Chris gets out of the house for a Vegas win celebration. If I get out of the house and leave my neighborhood or even step foot in a restaurant, you'll know the pandemic has passed. You'll know it's over. I am, exactly. I am first in, for, uh, last out, right? Philo. Hello. <laughs> I'm Philo. First in, last out. That's me. So, yeah, if I get out, you know it's it's safe to get out. Um, well, Dave, if Dave is Dave back? I'm back. I'm back. Can you hear me? Okay. Dave, I am so hungry, dude. Can you can we end this so I can go eat? Can we, we talk can. about the podcast and make sure everyone gave us a thumbs up? We, we will do way, all of those. I, go ahead. You can you can tell everyone I, to smash the thumbs up button for the YouTube algorithm and to subscribe and hit the bell, right? Ding. Can I just say I I'm starting to get so much anxiety from like not being on Discord in three days and so much to catch up on. I feel I have about six hours of reading Discord and just answering comments. And it's so hard to answer the comments. Every time I answer one, like to go back up and scroll through the list, it's just it's a frustrating format. Maybe I'm doing something wrong. No, it yeah, is a frustrating it was format. Like a threaded fact, reply format, because that would make it a lot easier to keep track of where you are and like who you're talking to. Right? If somebody could help me with that, if is there if there's a way to, to do that in Discord, please let me know. You but basically have, like, you can you can like see where you left off and everything below the line is new, but there's no threaded conversation. So it is a little bit difficult to kind of catch up, but you can click on the little at symbol and see when people have mentioned your name, when they're directing a question towards you. That's, that's what I've been doing. And, and that tends to work. I'm going to go through and I'm, I'm going to spend the next day, I think just on discord, uh, catching up and, uh, I have a little bit more work to do in my garage today, but then I'll get on Discord and uh, catch up. And I'll try to answer everyone's questions. Jordan will as well. And so yep. will Dave. We'll do our best, guys. Uh, listen, this was an awesome <laughs> – this is supposed to be a one-hour episode, and it's like our longest episode. We're, but, we're clocking in at 2.17 right now. I got to eat, man. I got to yeah. eat. And uh, Jordan's daughter, too. There we go. Uh, well, I'm going to say thank you guys so much for watching. We are Dumb Money. We will see you on Thursday.